two day at the games presented by Noble. I'm Kayla Banfield and I'm joined by three-time Affiliate Cup champ Adrian Conway. Adrian, we're in a, a bit of a pop-up tent. The rain has really set in for the final day of competition, but what a week we have had so far. Adrian, your thoughts on competition? We've had to call a couple audibles for sure, but that's a part of sport. <laughs> and, and I gotta say, I've been a part of this sport since 2010, and the last four days have been the most exciting days of competition that I've experienced in all those years. I can't wait to see what the final day brings. Exciting they have been. Speaking of exciting, individual event 10 last night in the Coliseum was electric. Tia Claire Toomey did enough to maintain her spot. The top of the leaderboard with a top 10 position, but for the night, Brooke Wells redemption after her elbow injury last year. Danny Spiegel takes it out, making it look like light work all the way through the end. But Adrian, it was a head to head on the men's side. You know it was, and we've had sandbags, but we've never had them this heavy. Look at the emotion that was there in the Coliseum as we see Gerard do his traditional chest, chest pump, and the crowd loved it. Daryls was an absolute technician, and what an exciting way to break the ties. Although there's a little storyline that we'll add to that at the end. But this is what I'm so excited about is Nick Matthew as a rookie. Look at that performance in the fire. And then we all know Guy Malheros, when it's heavy, he's here to shine, and he seizes the moment. Look at that. The Coliseum was electric last night. And that is what the CrossFit Games is all about. Mike Arsenault caught up with our winners last night after individual event 10. What an 10. incredible performance, what an incredible night by both of you. Nick, let's start with you. You've already had a 100-point win here on the Coliseum floor so far in this 2022 CrossFit Games. What was that experience like? Take us through that. What is it like to compete in front of these thousands of fans on a Saturday night? This is insane. Like. I mean, biggest competition I've ever been in. This is this is amazing. I don't, I don't even have words. Guy, you went first and first in your last two events. You look like a completely different athlete than the first three days of competition. What has changed for you? Uh, I don't know. Maybe the workouts are good for me, and I'm just making sure that if it's, if it's a home run, I'm gonna hit. Well, you both hit a home run. Congratulations, Nick Guy. 100 points here in event number 10. Congratulations. Nick Matthews making rookies. They're, they're really creating a show this year for the CrossFit Games. Absolutely creating a show. I mean, I couldn't be more excited about exactly what the athletes showcased last night in the Coliseum. And Nick Matthews is an athlete, when we consider it, he didn't even know he was coming to the CrossFit Games as until four or five weeks ago. So he's putting on a show. And we celebrated some champs yesterday as well. Our age groups and adaptives are done for the weekend. And how cool that they got to celebrate in the Coliseum. It was amazing. I think what we saw last night, these athletes getting to be the focal point, showing the fittest on earth in each one of the divisions. It was a really special moment. And I got to be a part of that to a degree last year in the Masters category. We didn't get that much love right, in the spotlight. And last night when I saw that happen, I had goosebump moments. It was not even close to the excitement that, you know, we've seen to the individuals and they get to actually experience that themselves. And now we're taking a look at the champs here. We've got a breakdown of a lot of the adaptive divisions. Casey Acree, Cam Camille Vigneault, Charles Pinar, Valerie Cohen, Brett Horchar, and also Morgan Johnson all did their thing in all the different divisions, and they're the champs. Over on the teen side, RJ Meester takes out the 14 to 15 year olds and Ty Jenkins for the 16 to 17. Lucy McGonigal is our 14 to 15 girl champ, and Olivia Kerstetter at only 16 years old wins the 16 to 17 division. Those are the athletes on the rise, and these are the athletes that are in the Masters category on the men's side. Brian Rong, Rudolph Berger, Jason Grubb, Sean Patrick, Mike Egan, Shannon Aiken, and Cal Sherrington are the ones that get to stand on top of that podium this year. A great weekend for our Masters women's as well. Amelia Lepinen takes out the 35 to 39 category, a very tough category. Kelly Friel is up on top of the 40 to 44. Kim Purdy in our 50 to 54. And Julie Holt in our 65 plus. Now, there's still so much going on today. It is the final day of competition. Let's take a look at our schedule. We are going to start the day with the individuals at 9 a.m., moving over to the teams. Individuals and teams zigzagging back and forth all day. But Adrian, a bit of a different finish to our final day of competition. 
Yeah, the teams are the finale and are the focus of the day, which is completely brand new to our sport. And, and part of me wonders, Kayla, are, are we seeing Rich Fronin grace that Coliseum floor for the last time? And does HQ perhaps know something we don't? I don't know. But if it is, folks, make sure that you stay tuned and support those teams because it's going to be one of the most exciting final days of the team competition we've ever seen. And I guess we'll all find out soon. Let's take a look at our leaderboard, starting off with our teams. CrossFit Reykjavik is just out of that top three position. CrossFit Invictus coming in third and CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue sit in Snecket second. But but Adrian, CrossFit Mayhem Freedom are looking pretty good up on top of that leaderboard. They really are. They had a bit of a slow start this weekend, and it was something that many of us didn't expect. But as the events continue to play out and the test becomes more well-rounded, we have seen the champs rip off five straight first place finishes and do it in an exciting and impressive way. What a show. And over on our men's side of competition, the fourth spot is 154 points out, so we're pretty much set for that top three. Roman Kredikov in third, but there is a tight race for that top position, Adrian. Yeah, it's literally the best competition that we've ever seen. We, we've never seen the points this tight going into a final day, and what we know from what's listed, there are three events. That means there's a lot of points up for grabs, and it could literally go to any three of these men that are sitting right now at the projected podium spot. Over on our women's side of the competition, we have Emma Lawson still sitting in third position, Mallory O'Brien in second, and Adrian Tia Claire Toomey is really looking to make history this year. Yeah, and I think she's going to. <laughs> I don't mean to take the wind out of anyone else's sails, but the champ is here. She got off to a bit of a slow start, a lot like Mayhem did, which none of us predicted. But I'll tell you what, the recovery has been impressive. And now she's on a roll, and she said earlier in this weekend, she's here for a fight. And I think right now she's loving every second of it. <laughs> Individual event 11 is up next. Let's take a look at what these athletes have in store. We start with a 126 foot sled push. They'll be dropping kettlebells as they go through. And then at the end, they've got kettlebell clean and jerks and rope climbs. Finishing off with that sled push. Adrian, what are your thoughts on this event? I absolutely love this event. And from what we know, Kayla, from even behind the scenes, this is an OG, old school, Adrian Bosman original something similar to what they used to do at CrossFit San Francisco due to the lack of or availability <laughs> of equipment. So to see something this simplistic yet such a great test make it to the CrossFit Games floor, I love the way that they've implemented things and I really think it's just a summary of what we've seen over the last four days. And over on the women's side, you've got your eye on Danielle Brandon. I do. I, you know, Danielle Brandon's someone that I actually had picked to be on the podium before the game started. The one thing that we hadn't seen from her in the past is a cool calm, collected athlete that has ups and has downs, but still executes when the moment is at its highest. So today, we are going to get an opportunity to see, can she be that athlete? We know she's got the talent, and now can she put it all together and finish to find herself standing on top of the podium? And over on the men's side, Ricky Garrard is chasing that leader's jersey, Adrian. I got to admit, he's making me look a little bad here. <laughs> so I had Ricky just outside of the podium this year, and, and one of the things was that yeah, Ricky's got the skill set and the talent, but coming off of being away for so long, was the moment going to be too big for Ricky? Could he execute? And what he's doing right now is he's showing us that the answer is yes. He showed up hungry. He showed up humble. He's still got the passion and the zeal that we expected to see from him, but he's executing like he's been around forever. Although this is only his second year at the CrossFit Games, and sometimes people forget that. It's going to be an exciting final day of competition, that's for sure. A big thank you to our sponsors, Noble. Get a free Noble towel with your purchase. Use the code GAMES22 at checkout. Head to nobleproject.com slash CrossFit while supplies last. That'll be it for us here at Day at the Games. I'm Kayla Banfield for Adrian Conway. Enjoy individual event 11. A six word phrase that we say, uh, what is CrossFit? CrossFit is constantly varied functional movements that are executed at high intensity. It's a strength and conditioning program that mixes weightlifting, calisthenics, powerlifting, running, rowing, biking in a whole bunch of different ways. 
It's family, it's community, it's a no BS approach to bettering your life, not only inside the walls of the gym, but also outside the walls of the gym. Todos não como pode, é, como devem, né? If I look at each individual person that walks in every single day here, it's like everybody's absolutely different. It could look like my 80-year-old dad. It could look like my kids. I can honestly say hand on heart that it will change their life. Not because it's just a fitness program, not because of the community, but because the greatest adaptation that occurs in CrossFit happens right here. What does it take? How do I train? What do I eat? How do I recover? How much do I sleep? How do I react? What if this happens? What if that happens? Am I prepared? It all adds up. It's not about what I do. It's about what I don't do. No excuses, no shortcuts, no gimmicks, no tomorrows. Where I am is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Here is where the epiphany came to me. I'm part of the most prestigious, most decorated SEAL team in the history of modern warfare. We never ever skimp on body armor. We never skimped on weapon systems, the demolitions. We never skimped on any of that. We're gonna work hard, but we need to recover. We need to repair better. We need to train better. We need to train smarter. Thorn has really become my one-stop shop. Look at a population of, of our military or our athletes. We have a multitude of different issues from individual to individual. The goal is to educate them. Whatever spectrum of fitness you need, Thorne has the product for you. Give us the best, give us your best. Our goal is to be the best in which we do. In Thorne products, there is no better product, and that is why we use it. My name is Annie Thorstetter two times fittest woman in the world, and this will be my 12th time competing at the CrossFit Games. Life is busy, complex, and amazing, but life is also full of choices and decisions we need to make. RP makes it easy for me to fuel for my performance at the gym and for at-home life with my family. I spend less time worrying about what to eat and when, and more time playing with my little girl. Our lives were slowing down until we made a change. As we've gotten older, it feels like we've lost a little bit of that magic between us. But now, oh, I'm ready to go anytime. That's right, anytime. And of course, we always use protection. Introducing Bikes, the number one expert recommended way to reinvigorate your life. Use Once Daily Bikes by Trek. Ask your local bike shop which bike is right for you. When I did my level one, I actually didn't want to be a coach. I was working as a young lawyer in a law firm, just starting out in my professional career, and I found CrossFit. I fell in love with it at the gym I was going to. There were some really inspiring people there that made me want to do my level one. Once I did it, I guess that just made the passion even more intense and I was asked to start doing some coaching on the side, which I did and I really loved that. The experience of interacting with, meeting and positively influencing people from all walks of life has been one of the best things about being a CrossFit coach. In a gym, in an affiliate, you will meet people from all walks of life 
and in that you're also going to inspire people to live healthier lives and ignite that passion for fitness that you have in other people. So that has been one of the, the greatest things about being a CrossFit coach. The 2022 Noble CrossFit Games are sponsored by Noble. No excuses, no shortcuts, no gimmicks, no tomorrows. Noble. Rogue, the official equipment supplier of the Noble CrossFit Games. Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit. GoWad, the official mobility partner of the Noble CrossFit Games. And Guaranteed Rate, the official mortgage company of the Noble CrossFit Games.
One day remains here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games, and in a matter of hours, we will know who is the fittest on earth. Thanks for being with us today on a rainy Sunday morning in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Chase Ingram, and Mike Arsenault is down on the competition floor. For the first time in a long time, all three spots on the podium are up for grabs heading into the final day in the men's competition. Just 39 points to separate Justin Medeiros from Roman Krennikov. And we've had one heck of a wrestling match for that top position, and it all came down to the sandbag event. Big Lift Saturday was an understatement because the battle between Medeiros, Krennikov, as well as Ricky Garrard about what order that one, two, and three is going to be. No one could lift that final bag to separate each other, but at the end, we had a big tie break as Ricky Garrard and Justin Medeiros, who have been the closest on the top with that white jersey, and it went to Justin Medeiros that got six valuable points on Ricky Garrard going into Sunday. The lead is now 17 between Medeiros and Garrard. The Alpaca is event number 11, and it has changed. The rope climbs have been eliminated due to safety concerns because of the conditions. So now it's all about the sled and the kettlebells. The test of fitness is also a war of attrition, and durability and determination will be on display this morning because this is a nasty test. Heavy sleds, heavy kettlebells, clean and jerks with odd objects. It is gonna be tough for these athletes out here on the field. Recipe for success presented by Trifecta. That, those kettlebells are heavy by themselves. They're heavy when they're in doubles. It's even worse when there's six of them. And that alpaca sled, the first time we're seeing that piece of equipment, manage your grip fatigue because those kettlebells get heavy. But at the end, it's all gonna come down to that final sled push over that last two sections. Let's send it down to Mike Arsenault, who is out there in the elements at the North Park. Well, Sean, Mother Nature has been challenging the athletes thus far in the competition. Yesterday was the heat and the humidity. Today is the rain. The rain has pretty much ceased. It's just lightly spitting right now, but it was pouring rain earlier. And as mentioned, that made the ropes much too slick. The demo team with Adrian Bosman has been out here all morning long. They decided to remove that element in terms of safety. However, the red turf made the sleds much easier to push. So what the team at Rogue has done, they've used paint thinner to remove the layer of paint on the bottom of the sleds to make the sleds move a little more uniform and make it a little bit more difficult for these athletes here in event number 11. Thanks, Mike. And there's the demo team. And they were out here earlier with Adrian Bosman, who's in the orange jacket, the competition director. And they also have Katie Hanniger that's out there making sure that here's the thing. They are making sure this test is appropriately designed based off what we had. And really, without the rope climbs in here, it's, it's a completely different test. It opens up the door, really, for a lot more athletes to start off this morning. And the demo team was out here. They had some ropes that they had soaked, and then they hung, and they wanted the demo team to try it out to see how it felt. And after they played around with it a little bit, they decided that the rope climbs just needed to be eliminated. So here's what the, there's Bill Henniger from Rogue, and they are, like Mike said, taking that paint thinner to the bottom of those sleds to make sure that everything is going to work uniformly here. And, and what that can do is that, it, as you said, Sean, it, it takes away, I mean, how many times we heard it's like, well, the, the blades of the grass on the field were the reason why my sled wasn't moving, or the fans in the back with the water shooting. It's like they are eliminating any possibility of there being an advantage or disadvantage based off the equipment itself. You always want the test to be determined by the athletes, not by the, equip uh, by the equipment. So there is a, another delay. So we are going to step aside for a little bit. When we are ready to go, we will come back and we will have Alpaca event 11 for the men.
And we are set to go for men's event 11, the Alpaca. 30 men, the entire field will be out there in the North Park. The overall leaders will all be right in the middle of the field. Saxon Panchik in lane 18 has an event win in the North Park earlier. He won up and over. And Spencer Panchik still very much in contention for Rookie of the Year. But we've mentioned it coming in. The top three spots, we know who, we just don't know where. Oh, man, I, I can't think of a, coming into a Sunday like this ever at the games in a long time, maybe 2015, with that back and forth between Ben Smith and Matt Fraser. But these three guys have been going head to head to head all weekend long. And with an event like this, anything can happen. And we are underway. We start with a sled push loaded with six 70-pound kettlebells. They have to push it two sections, and then they will unload two. And this is a heavy sled. And this is a unique element. This sled was designed by Rogue Fitness for specifically this event. So this alpaca sled is a very unique piece of equipment. So they're going to drop two kettlebells at the double line, advance the sled, until they get to the next one, drop another two until the very end, and then we'll get into our kettlebell clean and jerks. And Justin Medeiros is in a very similar similar situation to last year. He just has to stay close to Ricky and Roman right now. But he had a much bigger buffer between him and Pat Vellner because when you look at the points between the two of them, what, 17 points is not a lot. Well, Travis Mayer is out front early along with Sam Klott. Now, most men are getting to their first set of now 20 kettlebell clean and jerks. Justin Medeiros starting ahead of Roman Krennikov and Ricky Garrard. And the way this event has changed is that it's completely opened the field to that anyone has a possibility of being successful here. It turns into a very high-skilled pulling movement of grip fatigue and technique to an absolute dogfight of an event of athletes that are just going to have to fight each other for these points. Justin Madero's taking a break. Sam Quant, Yonikoski, Travis Mayer, and now Tim Paulson in the lead. Paulson is through 14 of those 20 clean and jerks. That's Travis Mayer on the right side. Mayer coming in in 19th place overall. You see Mayer losing control of it, and that's the tough part about these kettlebells. It's 70 pounds in each each hand, and you think it's like, oh, 140 pound clean and jerk, how hard can that be? With these kettlebells, they're so oddly weighted. If you have never used one before, start doing this, because this is a nasty test of strength and stamina. Pat Vellner, Yonokoski, Ricky Garrard, and now Sam Kwan all towards the front. Kwan has three reps remaining, as does Krenikov. Gerardo and Medeiros are neck and neck. Pat Vellner now on his, what should be his final rep. Now Roman Krenikov will be the first man back to his sled. Ricky Garrard is out ahead of Medeiros, and Sam Quant is moving as well. You see how Ricky on the right's pushing with his arms. I'd advise that, you know, you're already pressing overhead. Roman's pushing from his shoulders, trying to give his arms a break. Same thing with Justin Medeiros. And now we go to 15 kettlebell clean and jerks and then they'll reload and push another section. And that's the unique part about this test at the end is because pushing out, okay, went heavy to light, but on the way back, the reps are gonna decrease. Fantastic, the sled weight is going to increase as well as the distance at the very end. They're only pushing one section for the first two. They'll push double to get to the finish line. Every man wearing those hand grips. Roman Krenikov is in first place right now. Brent Fakowski, Yonikowski, Pat Veller, and Sam Quant all fighting for second. But Krenikov is halfway, more than halfway through. He has five remaining now. Roman's dead with hands in the air. 
Ricky Garrard is up there as well. Justin Medeiros has fallen off the pace here. Let's go down to Mike Arsenault. The CrossFit community has been waiting to see Roman Krennikov compete in person at the CrossFit Games for five years, and his performance thus far makes people wonder, will we see him again? Well, I have some news from his coach, Nick Fowler. Roman, his wife, and his son now have P1 visas, which means they will be staying in the United States for the next five years. Oh. So as long as the fitness stays there, there's a good chance we're going to see Roman continue to compete at the CrossFit Games for years to come. That is fantastic news. Goosebumps down the forums with that, Mike. Roman Krennikov now in the lead. Ricky Garrard is in second, and along with Brent Fakowski. Now Sam Quant is moving. Now for these final 10, do you take the chance? Do you gamble on yourself to get through these 10? and try to get to that finish line. And this is big for Ricky and Roman with Medeiros behind them. Justin Medeiros right now is in eighth place in the heat. Krennikov and Fakowski are top two. Gerard and Velner up there as well. Ricky needs to save 17 points off of Medeiros' lead to tie him for the top spot. On the leaderboard, Yarokoski on the left side, he is moving up into the top four. Sean, we were talking last year, the battle between Ricky or between Vellner and Justin, and they couldn't get away from each other because they didn't have the help. This year, they have the help. Quant is back. Roman, Ricky, Fakowski, Jukic. And there goes Roman Krennikov, who right now sits in third place, only 39 points out, and he already has one event win here. And he's looking at another. He has to push the sled entirely across the finish line. And Roman Krennikov is going to rack up another 100 points. And we talk about the dog fight we've had all weekend. Keep your eye in the back between Ricky Garrard and Justin Medeiros. Gerard and Medeiros are tied on the sled. Here come Quant, and I think that's Vellner, but Medeiros is putting on a late charge, and Justin Medeiros is going to... And Jason Hopper got in between the two of them. But Roman Krennikov now is really going to make things interesting heading into the final two events. Krennikov was only 22 back of Gerard for second. More men finishing up here, but the top three are Krennikov, Quant, and Velder, Gimajeros, then Justin Medeiros, then Hopper, then Gerard, and Tim Paulson finishing in eighth place, his best finish of the competition. And so we're looking at is Medeiros still in first after this. His distance has increased potentially another six points between him and Ricky, but Krennikov is now right behind Ricky. Going into what we have listed as two more events before we get to the end. Unofficially, Krennikov knocks 22 points off of Medeiros' lead. So now he is only 17 back of Justin. And Ricky is going to surrender six points. Looking like he will be 23 points out. So Krennikov now unofficially just may have moved himself into second place overall. Well, Saxon Panchik, meanwhile, just finished. And here comes Spencer. You know, Saxon was in sixth place. Vellner was behind him. 
by about 32 points. Hopper behind by 35 points. So Vellner and Hopper might move up a spot. Adler, who is in fourth. There's Will Morad. He wasn't that far clear from the other guy, so we're going to have some clustering at about two different spots on the leaderboard. What a push, though, from Justin Medeiros late as we watch Ricky, sorry, Will Morad come across. But it looked like Gerard and Krennikov for most of that event. And it was in, it was in. Justin and Justin late, man, what a push. And Gerard opened the, the possibility back up because last 10 kettlebell clean and jerks were very slow relative to his first few sets. And he'd about tapped out before he even got to the sled and that opened the possibility for Medeiros to pass him. Go on is the personalized mobility program already trusted by most of the pro athletes like Justin Medeiros and Matt Fraser. Get the GoWad app and experience the benefits with a 14-day free trial. Two event wins so far for Roman Krennikov, and he did it in dominant fashion. He beat Sam Quant by more than 16 seconds. Roman Karanikov just so meticulous on the kettlebells, so strong on the sled, but he made a big move on this set of 15. Ricky Garrard did as well, but fell off on the set of 10, and Roman doing everything he needed to do to come in. Then you see the center part of the lanes. Medeiros in the white and red getting ahead of Ricky, but at the very end, Hopper below Ricky, which is great for Medeiros, not for Ricky Garrard. Let's go down to Mike Arsenault. Roman, 100 points here on event number 11. The weather changed the format of the workout. We eliminated the rope climbs. How did that impact your preparation for this? Ну, я очень ждал канат. Я все эти четыре дня думал, когда уже канат. Это одно из моих сильных сторон. И пошел дождь сегодня. Я думал, по-любому его ну, не отменят, а перенесут в Колизей. Я думал, будем там лазать. Но потом судья сказал, что будет на мокром канате. Ну, для меня это не новое. Я в Ирландии уже на, сан на санкционированных лазал. Поэтому я был не удивлен. Окей, полезем по мокрому. Но потом отменили, ну ладно, еще легче, быстрее, так что круто. Uh, he was preparing for the rope climb. It's one of his strengths. And when they announced that it's going to be weather change and the rope is going to be wet, it's not a brand new uh, movement for him either. In Ireland, back in sanction event, he climbed a, a wet rope and he was really good at it. He was looking forward to it. When they took away the rope, this workout became much easier for him. So he is very excited. Roman, you have two event wins here at your first appearance at the CrossFit Games. The CrossFit community has been waiting a long time to see you. This is your moment. Roman Krennikov, everyone here at North Park, let's hear it. Hey, shout out to the translator for remembering all of that. <laughs> the real MVP. It's been great to see Roman Krennikov finally here, and you got to give a lot of credit to the support system around him. Snorri Baron, his manager, has worked very hard to get Roman here, and such great news that he is going to be able to stay and hopefully compete more at the CrossFit Games. It has been a blast to watch him. Second event win of the competition for Roman Krennikov. Sam Quant takes second. Pat Velder with third, and it's Guy Mayeros in fourth. Justin Medeiros late, putting on a charge, and gets Jason Hopper between him and Ricky Garrard and picks up another six points on Ricky. And it looks like Roman Krennikov may have put himself in second place overall. More to come here from the North Park. Stay with us. The women coming up next in the Alpaca.
inside the North Park as we kick off the fifth and final day of competition here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. We just saw the men take on Alpaca. The women are up next. Atia Toomey has a 98-point lead over Mallow Bryan for first. Emma Lawson and Danielle Brandon are fighting for that final spot on the podium. Haley Adams, Brooke Wells, and Christy O'Connell all still alive, but they're going to need to come up with a huge performance here and get some help on Sunday. I think all three women have actually worn the white jersey this week in City in the top three, but we kick things off at the pool where Tia picked up some points on O'Brien, but O'Brien hit back in the sprint hat trick and Emma Lawson who was in a good lead to start the weekend struggled with the sandbag last night and now she is looking over her shoulder at Daniel Brandon who was just five points behind her and it was Brandon switching up the order of bags that changed the game for everyone that got her just a handful of points out of a podium position. Once again, the rope climbs that were announced as part of this event last night have been taken out due to athlete safety. Now it's down to the sled and those kettlebell cleaning jerks. Heard of be prepared for the unknown and unknowable, Sean, but this is ridiculous. Just kidding. This event's awesome. <laughs> this is a nasty test to kick off Sunday, and it's going to come down to a test of wills and wants because this gets heavy. Manage your grip fatigue on the kettlebells as well as the sled push. That can come into play, and at the end, we saw this on the men's side. If you want to get on top of the podium, you're going to have to fight for it. Let's send it down to Nikki Brazier. Good morning, guys. Now, the alpaca is a variation of the rogue sled that we know and love, and the ladies did have it back in the warm-up area to test before this event, but as I was back there watching them prepare, I noticed that a lot more concern was around the proper technique on these heavy kettlebells. Now, Boz did tell us this morning that this event could be won or lost on these, so we'll see if that practice pays off. All 30 women on the field here. Danny Spiegel in lane six picked up her first career event win last night in the sandbag ladder. Lane 11, Laura Horvath has finally punched inside the top 10, and Brooke Wells currently sits in six. What a great return for her. And then in lane number 30 is Rebecca Fusile. She made the games by one point and squeaked inside the cut line last night. But this is the battle for third place. Emma Lawson on the left, currently in third. Danielle Brandon just five points back. And as Nikki was saying, is that this is coming down to the kettlebells, but it was always about the kettlebells. Boz even alluded to that earlier this morning about what the test is really going to center around. So yes, the ropes may not be there. Danielle Brandon just had a mistake. She thought she was only going to have to push to the first line and had to stop. Brandon now making up some ground as the women are starting to offload their kettlebells, and then they'll continue to push. Now, I don't see that really being an issue for her. It was two lengths to start things off, and then we'll do one and one towards the finish line. But second slots, we saw how important that was on the men's side. And Daniel Brandon has the, some ground to make up here. Emma McQuaid, Amanda Barnhart, Danny Spiegel, Karn Freyova, and Lauren Horvath are your lead women right now in the first portion of this event. Now we'll have to turn the sled and now we get to work on the kettlebell cleaning jerks. 53 pounds in each hand. The Tia Toomey, 958 total points, 98 up on Mal O'Brien. Mal O'Brien looking like she's going to finish on the podium. And we'll see if another teenager will join her. Emma Lawson getting to work. Freyova, Horvath, and Spiegel, your top three right now, followed by Toomey and Wells. Mal O'Brien right there also. We said Emma Lawson just failed her second rep of the overhead. And when you remove the rope, like I said earlier, it opens up the doors for pretty much every athlete in this field. There is Danielle Brandon. Brandon and Brooke Wells. 
A big benefit for Brandon, who's in the middle, is that her overhead position is so good. She can get into a nice stacked position where it's not as fatiguing. Some athletes can't get into that proper position, and it's way more taxing on the overhead position. There are 53 total scored repetitions in this event. And Laura Horvath has now two clean and jerks left. She is in the lead. Freyova, Spiegel, Raptus, then Toomey now is in fifth. Danielle Brandon, because of that early mistake, is in 16th in the heat. There goes Laura Horvath. Freyova looks to be the second woman back to the sledge. She'll have to load those two kettlebells up and then push it one section. That's where Laura Horvath is on the left side of your screen. And a lot of this is just learning this on the fly, because if you're not used to kettlebells, you know, Boss put this in there because it's not to say old school, but you know, there was an, always a pretty barbell and a nice sled back in the early days and being able to work with what you got, kettlebells could be found and available. And so if you don't have a lot of practice here, this is a tough implement to get used to on the fly, let alone at this weight. Laura Horvath back to work. She is your leader. Spiegel and Freyova were behind her. Horvath ninth overall. She's had three straight finishes of ninth or better, two of those at thirds. That turnover from Horvath is fantastic. Here goes Emma McQuaid. Matia Tui has just finished up her set of 20. I mentioned Danielle Brandon. She's starting to work her way up here in the seat. Right now sits in ninth, and the good news for her is that Emma Lawson is towards the back of the pack. She's in 20th place as Emma Lawson in the seat. She's in the background in the middle of your screen along with Mal O'Brien going through their first set of 20. So Danielle Brandon right side looking to put herself inside the top three after this event, and she is getting all the help that she can right now. And if you don't look at this as this is a very particular strength test. The odd weight distribution that is a kettlebell. We, look, we got dumbbells in. People are dumbbell work all the time. When was the last time you picked up a heavy kettlebell and did some practices? When was the last time you picked up two heavy kettlebells and did some training with it? And that's the theme we've seen throughout the weekend. It's not that Oh, we've never seen this before, but have you been doing the different tests that are available to you? The playbook is wide open, and it's not just about strength. It's always coming down to technique. What can you do with this odd object? Just because it's not a pretty barbell or a shiny dumbbell doesn't mean it shouldn't be available to you in your training. Laura Horvath is halfway through her final set of kettlebell clean and jerks, and she has a final sled push after that. And what's nice for Laura, she gets to sit out there with the entire field and really see who's catching up to her. Look for somebody's any hand in the air. She's so far ahead. But the technique that she has in this turnover. And think about who coaches her. Ben Smith. You think Ben Smith has done some kettlebell work at his his glory days, maybe in front of the refrigerator in his garage? I'm gonna Absolutely. And this is where it benefits of opening up and expanding your training. It's not about training for the games. It's about training for anything and everything. Danny Spiegel's on the left side. She sits in second, but Laura Horvath getting set to close out this set. Kettlebell's back onto the sled. One final sled push for Laura Horvath to pick up her first win of the competition. GoWatt is the personalized mobility program already trusted by most of the pro athletes like Justin Medeiros and Matt Fraser. Get the GoWatt app and experience the benefits with a 14-day free trial. Here comes Laura Horvath. And a dominant performance for her. And she will earn her first win of these 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Fifth career event win for Laura Horvath. 
6 minutes, 46.96 seconds. Danny Spiegel is now your leader on the field. She has two reps remaining, now one. Ellie Turner has moved into third, followed by Magawa and Freyova. And there goes Danny Spiegel. A first last night and a second to kick off the final day of competition for Danny Spiegel. Ellie Turner and Gabby Magawa to the sled at the same time. And that's going to be a close race. Magawa pulling ahead of Turner. Magawa is in. Oh, no. She one left it short. You got to get across the black. And Ellie Turner is going to get in ahead. And here comes Alexis Raptus. Raptus will take six, Magawa fifth, and Turner will get fourth. Freyoma will finish in third place. So Ariel Lowen and Amanda Barnhart onto the sled. That looks like Emma McQuaid across the finish line. She'll get 8, 28.28 seconds. Now here comes Daniel Brandon, who's ahead of Emma Lawson. Barnhart just finished, she'll take eighth. And now Saunders is in. Sayer Kaya and Sung Young Choi across. And now Danielle Brandon is in. Brandon will take 14th in the event. Here comes Tia Toomey. She's fighting with Matilda Garns. Toomey is in. And she will widen her lead over both O'Brien and Lawson. And there is Mal O'Brien. O'Brien will only surrender three points to Toomey as she takes 18th. Now Emma Lawson has three more kettlebell clean and jerks remaining. Haley Adams still out there as well. This is where we were coming into the event. Daniel Brandon is going to get into the top three. Well, not only is this good for Brandon, but it's also great for Horvath. And there goes Haley Adams, who can take even more points away from Emma Lawson. And Adams is going to hang on. She will take 23rd in the event. And Emma Lawson will finish 24th. Danielle Brandon, who finished 14th, will earn 61 points. Emma Lawson, who took 24th, will earn 34. And there is Cara Saunders and her daughter, Scotty. And that is, it's a great moment. Saw that last year with Scott Panchik. Got to celebrate with his family. And as a parent, anytime you can celebrate these moments with your kids, obviously you're going to remember these a bit more than they will. But those are the things that stick with you. And speaking of Aussies, Tia Toomey once again, widening her lead and tightening her grip on the top spot on the leaderboard as she marches towards her sixth straight CrossFit Games Championship. Mal O'Brien is still very much alive. 
to be the youngest woman to ever finish on the podium at the CrossFit Games. I mean, she only surrendered a spot. Three points. And you know, we don't know how much more of Tia that we have. We're curious who's going to take that spot when she's gone. Well, two of them are on the screen right now, both Haley Adams and Emma Watson, part of that up and coming generation. And sometimes we forget about Haley Adams because she's been around for so long, but still very young. 21, 22 years old. I mean, there, there's so much that is to come with these athletes. But Mal O'Brien, the distance she has on the next place person. It looks like unofficially that Daniel Brandon will have a 22 point lead on Emma Lawson after this event. That is unofficial. Mal O'Brien finishing 18th in that event. So she's had two straight finishes. Uh, 18th or lower. 24th last night in the sandbag ladder, and then 18th today. Now, Laura Horvath, who is at 693 coming in. Getting first in where these other athletes finished, she took a huge chunk out of that deficit. We know the test that she's been hit with early on, these very high technical gymnastics tests. I mean, the only thing to trip up Tia Toomey this weekend was a single under. No pun intended. No, it was very intended, let's be honest. But Laura Horvath getting first, not knowing what the other two tests may be, but we can look back at what has been tested. I mean, she has a very legitimate chance of still being in contention for a podium position, depending on how the points shake out because of what Lawson just did. Brandon, Brandon's gonna get ahead of Lawson, but she finished in the bottom, being the middle portion of this group. Horvath also chasing Brooke Wells and Haley Adams. Wells finished 15th. So Horvath's gonna pick up 45 points on her. And Haley Adams is down in 23rd. So she'll pick up 64 on Haley. <laughs> Bailey Rail is still working through this. It's an 18 minute time cap. So another case where Adrian Bozin wanted every athlete to be able to feel the full effects of this event. And here comes Tia Toon to cheer on Bailey Rail. Rebecca Fuselay out there as well. Here comes Bailey Rail with one section remaining, and she gets has to get entirely across the finish line. Ariel Lowen out there as well. I think people have any idea how hard that is to do that much weight on the sled for that long without stopping. There's 318 pounds loaded on that thing, not counting the weight of the sled. And Tilda Gardens, Lucy Campbell, and Tia Toomey out there with the rookie Rebecca Fuselay, who's also competed here at the CrossFit Games as a team. 
And this is what happened on Friday morning and what is going to be, I think, one of the more iconic images that we see come out of the CrossFit Games for a while. The community pushing Fuselay across the finish line in the Capitol event. I was having discussions with people last night about that event and I asked them who won on the men and the women. They couldn't tell me. Right. But they told you about that moment by name. And Fusile is across. And once again, feeling the love from the CrossFit community is she closes out event 11. Laura Horvath, as you mentioned earlier, looking like she's going to make a big jump up the standings. Look, nothing is settled. The type of tests that we've had so far, anything is up for grabs. And if we're at the North Park and we're talking about grunt work, you put that with Laura Horvath. Daniel Brandon did what she needed to do to pass Emma Lawson. But where she finished on the leaderboard has definitely opened the door up for, like we said, Laura Horvath, Tia Toomey. All she had to do was stay ahead of Mal O'Brien. She did just that by one spot. But Mal O'Brien really doing what she needs to do. But between Haley Adams and Emma Lawson, those positions are going to change on the leaderboard with potentially two events left to go. Fifth career event win for Laura Horvath. Danny Spiegel with another top two finish. She had the win last night, and Kyra Freover is going to finish in third place. Let's go down to Nikki Brazier. Laura, we saw a lot of those women struggle with those heavier kettlebells. What was the technique that you used to stay smooth and fast the entire time? I just a uh, simple clean and jerk. I don't know. I, we've been doing a lot of kettlebells, and I always liked them, so I was happy when they saw, when they saw them came up. You've gone through a lot already this weekend, weekend, but you have some mystery ahead of you still before the end of the games. What are you hoping to see? Anything and everything. I'm just I'm happy to be here, and I'm just going to keep climbing. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Laura Horvath, first event win here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. And we're going to head inside to close things out. Action continues. Team Event 10 coming up next. Stay with us, everybody.
at the end of competition today, we will know the fittest team on earth, the winner of the Affiliate Cup. It's the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games team event number 10 at the Alliant Energy Center's North Park. It is a little bit rainy, so grab a poncho here and join us. I actually know those people in the center of the screen. I'm Joel Gadet, Jeremy Austin, Tanya Wagner is the 2009 Games champ. Jamie Hagia is our reporter down on the field. CrossFit Mayhem Freedom expected to be in first place. They are in first place. 8.52, the point load for Mayhem Freedom. It's actually the smallest margin though right now over Oslo Navy Blue. The smallest margin in a win for Mayhem since Rich Froning's first year in 2015. The field is deep here in 2022. The event that's on the line here in event number 10, 2-2, 2-2. Yeah, this one is going to be fun. We're going to accumulate 175 overhead squats, but they're going to have to do it in two-minute intervals in male-female pairs alternating. In order to get to that barbell, they have to first do two shuttle sprints each, and then they can accumulate those synchronized overhead squats. At the conclusion of the two minutes, your next male-female pair will take their turn and do the same thing. This will go back and forth until those 175 synchro overhead squats are accumulated. That event brought to you by GoWad Mobility First. Jeremy, the recipe for success. Recipe for success, well, it's very easy planning the pairs you're gonna be working with, making sure you get that range of movement as close as you can with your height difference with your team members and knowing exactly how much time you have left to go in each of those two minute intervals. Now going hard out, this is the second last event, making sure you push the boundary every second is going to count here because you get a good two minute rest in between those. Lane assignments here for the first and only heat in this event. We cut after last night, so there's just 20 teams remaining. Mayhem Freedom in lane 10 in first place. They have Mayhem Independence just a couple of lanes down. First and fourth right now for the two teams out of the same affiliate. Now you see Oslo Navy Blue and Reykjavik. Andy Thor's starters team on the cut line right now for a podium spot. But let's talk about another team they're fighting for a podium spot for. That's Invictus, Jamie Hagia. <laughs> I caught up with the team before this event, and they said they're obviously aware of where they are coming into this, but that they're very excited, and they're going to take it one event at a time. When I talked to their coach, CJ Martin, I asked what makes this team so special, and he said that their team chemistry, the respect they have for one another, and that they all have similar work ethics where they're willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. Your guaranteed rate team to watch here, and they're a true affiliate team. Devin Kim training there as a teenager. Jorge Fernandez walked in off the street. He was a baseball player at San Diego State and said, this place looks cool. Here they are fighting for a podium spot, event number 10 at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Joe, you say that with the true affiliate team, they've really flown under the radar, even though they've had some remarkable results in the last couple of days here. Can they keep that forward progression going and really start putting some pressure down? Oslo Blue and also Reykjavik, hot on their heels. So we have broken up into pairs here, male and female pairs. Double shuttle runs here, 42 feet out and back, 84 feet out and back, then another 42 feet out and back, then 84 feet to the barbell, where we'll begin with those overhead squats. Now these have to be synchronized, and Tanya, it's all on the back athlete to do the synchronicity. Well, your front athlete, obviously, the, not being able to see is going to be the one that leads the speed, but you, I expect to hear some communication if they can go a little faster, but you want to be able to just watch your, person, your front athlete's hips, watch your partner, make sure you get the synchronization at the bottom, and the top is the standard for this movement. So and they Jer can't just stand at the bottom, they can't just wait there like you can for some other movements, they have to hit both. And Jeremy, that's critical, and you just saw it right there with Jorge Fernandez hanging out for Devin Kim. The synchronizing at the bottom and the top is critical. Critical, and it's something we've seen back in the Coliseum if you think about going back to when they had the sliders. Now, we tested the sliders out and the concept to move good gauge of what speed you need to go at, and that's where your eyes are going to be focused on. 13 seconds left to go here in this first of eight two-minute intervals. That means two minutes for each athlete to work four times. GoWad is the personalized mobility program already trusted by most of the pro athletes, just like Justin Medeiros and Matt Fraser. Get the GoWad app and experience the benefits with a 14-day free trial. Visit GoWad.app, GoWad.app to learn more. We're now on that second window, so you'll see the first pair of athletes 
gingerly walking back to the rig. The others are on to their shuttle runs. And that's just it. They walk down the line, so as soon as it's stop, it's go time as well. So the second pair has to be ready. They are advancing their bars every 25 reps. The biggest thing here is to know what your team is on, be able to get there, get started, and you have to sell out on your two-minute increment. Here comes Iceland Danny working with Tolomar Aquino. Joel, you said about the weather. It definitely was a factor in this event. The athletes were briefed on this event just earlier today, and they were told it was going to have, they were going to do two rope climbs. You can see in the back of your screen, there are ropes hanging up there. It was meant to be the rope climbs followed by sprints and overhead squats. At the end of that announcement, they changed it. Adrian Bosman, due to the weather, inclement weather, and for the safety of the athletes, removed the rope climbs. So now the sprint overhead squat being the only two movements changes the speed of this thing big time. There is Invictus right now in first place. Third place overall coming in, trying to hang on to that podium spot. Brittany Weiss in front. Josh Alshama in the back. Invictus is the only team to have all of their event finishes in the top 10. So out of everyone out here, the only team so consistent this year. But it's the final day. Can they do it? Can they continue with a few more events to go? And you think about Invictus, they're the only affiliate to have had a team in every CrossFit Games that there has been a team competition. This may be their best finish outside of their 2014 championship. Of all the Invictus teams, this is right up there with all the greats. Rich still having a look around, see what everyone else is doing now. Andrea the, is in a world of pain. Rich is checking the field. Due to the changes with the rope climbs and now going to the double shuttle sprint, I think we are going to see some very fast times and not probably pushing that 16-minute time cap that has been prescribed for this event. Number of teams already. Invictus now at that 72 mark. 103 to go. So they can really start pushing the envelope on this, start redlining a little bit more see what they're capable of and get it done. Maybe in possibly six. This is the third of eight two minute windows. Again, each pair of athletes will have four windows to work in. 175 overhead squats is the task to accomplish. The shuttle runs, a little bit of an inhibitance for you to have to tackle first. Minute 20 seconds for these athletes to squat. Invictus in first place on the left, Mayhem Freedom in the event in second place on the right. And now advancing to the 100 mark for Jorge Fernandez in the back and Devin Kim, former team competitor at the games in front. Fisher and Porter for Reykjavik on the right. So much on the line, so much hype for Reykjavik coming into this competition. Just outside podium contention. 24 points removed from Invictus. Thing is, Reykjavik needs to do well. They also need Invictus to tumble a little bit to make up ground. I was just going to mention that, that the top four right now are the top four on the leaderboard, so this doesn't help getting Reykjavik any more jumps. We've seen that over the previous couple of events where they've all sat in that top five, top six spot, so the positions on the leaderboard haven't really changed. They've all progressed up and there hasn't been too many cuts in the points. Now, moving to the cuts from overnight to 20 teams, we're going to five-point spread now instead of three. Oh, Lauren Fisher just did a rep, but can't get credit for it because Khan didn't meet her there at the bottom. Three seconds left. This window comes to a close. We're starting to see, uh, we have been seeing here right at the end, it's the last few seconds where usually one athlete will do one more, and that's it's the front athlete because they can't tell, they can't see if the back athlete's going to go. Unlike the swim event yesterday where there, where there was no clock in the beep test, there is a clock in the corner of North Park. So you do have an idea of how much time you have left in terms of trying to pace yourself a little bit once you get to the overhead squats. The problem with that is doing the double shuttle sprint now. You're going to start gassing out a little bit more, a little bit more lung fatigue as you get to that overhead squat and trying to compose and keep that position for both people at the same time really difficult. You do have to do quick math, though, because we have the clock in two-minute increments for you on the screen. you got to make sure you're checking out for the right number of how much time you have left on the clock, tabulating the total time of the event at North Park. Invicta's still in first place. Now a seven-rep lead on Mayhem Freedom. Nistler and Froning on the right. Brittany Weiss, Josh Alshama on the left. Really good tempo, metronomish from 
mayhem. See the incentive screen, the red pants up and down. It's been really good pacing. Taking a plan break there. Together and then right back up. Invictus is still holding on though. They haven't broke, so there we go. It's interesting to break within your set of 25. And if, we'll see if that pays off or if for Invictus, if that fatigues them. Now, Invictus took second place in strong. They are incredibly strong when it comes to overhead. It'll be the last, if they get back to it, how shot their shoulders are, if they can hold that. This might be the end of it, depending on how quickly and efficiently you can overhead squat, at least for the teams in front. Eh, probably another window, probably two more windows here with Invictus at 131 reps leading the way. Again, it's 42 feet out and back, then 84 out and back, another 42 out and back, and then 84, and maybe a little bit more because the barbells have advanced down the field at this juncture. With our average out those 175 reps. We're looking at about 22 reps per interval. Teams absolutely smashing that right now, having plenty of time on the barbell. Possibly one more interval after this for Invictus. Probably a little bit out of reach for this one, unless they really start to dig in, but they're not going to do that with a no rep. Mayhem has made up a couple of reps here. Remember, Invictus had about a seven rep lead two minutes ago. It's now down to just two. Cornoyer and Taylor Williamson. Hand in the air to advance. Four more reps here at this station. And a no rep with Devin Kim and Fernandez. Kim just needs to get herself tightened up there in the bottom. Keep that good stable base. Now on to the final 25 for Invictus. They're not going to be able to get it done here. It'll have to go into the next window. Another no rep. It'll come down to a race between Nistler and Froning and Alshama and Weiss. If you think about speed, you're really pushing what you're capable of with your partner, also pushing the judge as well to get that range of movement. But here's what's smart. Williamson and Cornway move, rolled the barbell forward. Invictus held on overhead. There's so much more fatigue on their shoulders while they're moving the bar, and they had a couple costly no reps. I hope that doesn't cost them this one. We've got to think now that that is it for those pairs that are walking back with the number of reps on the left. You the can see the bar roll forward. Bar roll versus holding on. Does that take too much time? Does it help? See which strategy pays off here. Well, they knew they weren't going to get it done in that interval anyway, so no real point pushing it when you've got the other two team members who are fresh that have been resting for two minutes at the other end of North Park and coming down. And they'll finish things off here pretty quickly, you'd imagine. Here we go to the barbell. Mayhem and Invictus lockstep. Invictus has the lead, but it is narrow, and it's narrowing. Josh Alshama in the back, the newest member of the Invictus team, with five reps left to go for he and Brittany Weiss. They have now ceded the lead to Mayhem. Mayhem has won five in a row. Make it six. It's a CrossFit Games record. Just in the nick of time. Did you ever doubt? Six straight wins for Rich Froning and company capping off what may be his coronation. That was unbelievable speed on that last set. I think they made up four reps. Just hunted him down there. That, that speed, to be able to finish with that speed, incredible. Now you're looking at OBA nice. on the left side of your screen. Great fight here. Reykjavik on the right will gain no ground on the overall leaderboard with Invictus having already finished. 
then we have hit the cap again in two minutes. We will switch back. Except for them. They're done. Well, that was just under your six interval mark. So that's unbelievable. So plenty of time still in the bank. It looks like plenty of energy still in the bank as well. They don't look. It is an 11-19-18 unofficial score for Mayhem. 11-20.9 for Invictus. A little bit more than a second's difference. And teams now have got a massive break. So you're pushing that bubble for a top three spot. Now is the time to go. Empty the tank. Now Lauren Fisher, Con Porter are going to try to finish this off here for Reykjavik and secure another third place. They've been remarkably consistent. Hand in the air, final five reps. Top five finishes ever since that 30th. That really just uh, hurt the weekend for Invictus. The barbell is down. Porter and Fisher are across. We did the math this morning. That 30th at the end of day one, if Reykjavik had finished 10th, They'd be sitting in second right now. Oh, unbelievable performance from Reykjavik after that 30th. Here comes Milford, who did yeoman's work yesterday to hold on to their final position above the cut line. And OBA done as well. Nice return to the games for Kelsey Keel. Joey Tortora as well. And the floodgates now open with Nordic coming through. Mayhem Independence as well, Greater Heights. Nine teams have finished. This is the only heat. Got to get it now. Your finishing place in the heat is your finishing place in the event. And we hit our final window. Forty-two feet on a shuttle run, out and back. Eighty-four feet out and back. Forty-two feet out and back. And then you've got to run the length of the field at this point. All the way down to your barbell to finish. I absolutely love what Milford did just in they snuck into that top 20 overnight with a great performance. And they back it up now with a fourth jumping ahead of Navy Blue. All you need is an opportunity. Doesn't look like it should be trouble for the teams remaining to finish here. Minute and 15 seconds left to go before the time cap. Chloe Govan David leading the way and coming across with Frederick Dubay from Pro One Montreal. One minute remaining. Everybody is on at least the final 25 overhead squats. Urban Energy, one final rep. And the Van Zills across as a couple. Here comes Tyrannus. We had a bailout, a failed overhead squat rep near the top of the screen in lane four. There's eighth day. Move fast, lift heavy. Everyone coming across. Mary Kay Drysilker for Omnia. Another legacy team here at the games with a better performance than they had a year ago. Looking at a top 10 finish. CrossFit overtake in their return to Madison. Eight seconds remaining here. And poor T finishes 20th. The field clears with two seconds to spare. Guy's oh, focused, isn't he? He was focused from the get-go. I think it couldn't have gone any better. The way they just progressed and steadily just sped up their sets. Mayhem is always so good at their timing, at their tempos, and they love that race at the end. They love to push through there. You may not have many more moments here. Well, it's a so scene we've seen up. before, Rich and, and Andrea at the end, just having to fight on, fight and hold on. But man, Invictus, big second place finish for them. They're the ones that led the speed for this one. Um, they, they led the entire time. It's another top 10 finish for them. This is actually their third second place finish in the competition. They looked great. They picked their pairs well, moved nicely. 
Mayhem Freedom was always right there with them within seven to four reps. Reykjavik tried to get in the mix there. They were among the top two pushing to get in there, but Invictus didn't give up their lead until the last few seconds. Mayhem Freedom on their final set was just too fast for Invictus to keep up with. Come on, no reps creeping in for Invictus late. And give Rich Broning an opportunity and he'll definitely take it. We've seen it time and time again. Rich Froning finds a way. You trail, you get off to a slow start, you win by a second. But hey, Invictus still takes home second. They still secure their spot for now on the podium with still some more work to do here on the final day of competition. Let's check in with Jamie Hagia. Jorge, you had said that teamwork is one of your best attributes of this team. How did you guys pick your pairing when it was split up into twos? Um, honestly, uh, it comes down to body size. We're closer together, shorter. Um, but we work really well together. We've done it all year training, and they work well together. So I thought we could just attack together, and it was good. Speaking of those teamwork, you guys working together on those 175 overhead squats, what was the toughest part about synchroing those up together? My elbows were burning. <laughs> um, honestly, me and Jorge squat pretty similar, so I was just going at my pace and he was following. Josh, it came down to those final reps, you guys against Mayhem. What was going through your mind during those last final overhead squats? Just hold on. That's all we had to do, hold on and keep pushing, and that's what we did. So. And Brittany, you guys had a second place in this event. What does that do for your confidence going into the rest of the day? We're ready to finish strong. Congratulations. Thank you. Joshua Alshama told Jorge Fernandez that he would get the Invictus V tattooed on his chest. If they finish on the podium, man's got some tattoos, but he's got some space right there. Get the ink ready. Go and fill it in. He's a man of his word. Invictus. Second place finish to Mayhem. They keep themselves on the podium, 29 points clear of Reykjavik. Mayhem Freedom, Mayhem Independence, two of the top five teams right now in the field. Victus, they're just keeping Reykjavik out every single time. And that points difference is not getting close enough, I don't think, but it's gonna be a very interesting thing to see what happens on the podium with Navy Blue now. Yeah, it really is. The race is now between two and three. Ooh, it's going to be a good one tonight. They've kept the Heisman at Reykjavik. <laughs> it's worked. More competition still to come on the final day of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Games.crossfit.com has all the official results, standings, and more. We roll on in Madison. The 2022 Noble CrossFit Games are sponsored by Rogue, the official equipment supplier of the Noble CrossFit Games. Arosti, the official rapid recovery provider of CrossFit. Monster Hydro, the official energy drink of the Noble CrossFit Games. GoWad, the official mobility partner of the Noble CrossFit Games. And Noble, no excuses, no shortcuts. No gimmicks, no tomorrows, no bull. A lot of things were going through my head. After birth, I still remember I could not walk downhill with the stroller. Now all of a sudden, podium was realistic. You've also got this development where you're starting to get these younger athletes. Kids who have been doing CrossFit since they've been in elementary school. Now O'Brien, we saw her stare right in the face of the reigning women's champion and not blink. The young, upcoming, new blood of the sport.
Whether your goal is to chase records, write history, or become the best version of yourself, the intention put into the process is the same. To push your body to give its best every single day. For your body to give you what you want, you have to give it what it needs. The consistency you apply in every detail around your training is key. It allows you to perform one more rep in the last second. It's that rep that makes all the difference to make you better tomorrow. yourself is just like an dollar bill. No matter what you go through, if you believe in yourself, you still have value. The cool part about Expanding Horizons is there's no other program out there that bridges the gap between youth on probation and life after probation. So it's a court order program uh, where they come to CrossFit four days a week for an hour and participate in CrossFit. And this, the success of that program over the course of the last four years has been phenomenal. We all talk about this, right? CrossFit's developing friendships through thrusters and pull-ups. Truly, that means community, and we surround the youth with community. What these kids need is they need a, a positive community that really rallies around them and supports them to be the, the, the best person that they, they can be. You can make it. Remember the values you have in yourselves. That's the lesson I got for you. Hello and 
welcome to Day at the Games presented by Noble. It is the final day of competition here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. I'm Kayla Banfield and I'm joined by Dan Bailey. Dan, it seems the rain has cleared out for today, hopefully, and the team's just finished in their event 10. And what an exciting one in typical CrossFit mayhem and Rich Froning fashion. They came back towards the end. It looked like they were about four reps behind in that event, but he has a way of keeping his team on pace. They were a little bit slow, like I mentioned before, and then that kick at the finish, a quick race to the finish line. They were barely able to edge out CrossFit Invictus by one second, which again made it super exciting, but that's six event wins in a row now for CrossFit Mayhem Freedom. And men's individual event 11 started today, and Roman Krennikov took 100 points this morning. Absolutely. He has experience with these kettlebells. We saw in the interview afterwards, they did not pose a problem for him. This was going to be the thing that was going to slow the athletes down the most. And so he took an early lead and was able to hold it. You can see no one else is with him out on the field as he crosses the finish line. Justin Medeiros doing what he needed to do, started behind a little bit at the start, but then was able to best Ricky Garrard and put a little bit more of a point spread between him and Ricky as Ricky's trying to chase him down for that top spot on the podium. Your overall standings after 11 events, Roman Krennikov gets into that second position, edging out Ricky Garrard in third place. And Justin Medeiros is up on the top. And Dan, it's been a tight race all weekend. Yeah, really, there's two separate competitions going on. There's the guys at the top on the podium, and then there's everyone else. So we're really paying attention to what those three guys are doing. We've never seen a race like this on Sunday, specifically on the men's side at the CrossFit Games. So this is going to be one of the most exciting finishes we've ever seen. Fourth on down, the important thing to keep in mind is, how are these guys going to shake things up for the three at the top? Everybody who finishes in between one of those competitors is putting distance in terms of points. So it'll be exciting to see the last two events coming up today. And of course, over on the women's side, a great start to the day for Laura Horvath. She gets 100 points for individual, 11, individual event 11. No surprise to me at all that the kettlebells did not trip up Laura at all. She's trained by Ben Smith, a legend of the game. So she came out and got a big, big chunk of points that she needs going into this final day. When we take a look at some of the other competitors that were out on the floor, Danielle Brandon, she started out a little slow, a little confused at the start of the event, but finished strong and did what she needed to do as well as Tia Toomey she put more of a gap between her and Emma Lawson as well as Mal O'Brien Mal O'Brien though staying right in the hunt there again those three girls have really separated themselves from the pack especially Tia with a large lead and Tia stays on top of that leaderboard followed by Mallory O'Brien and Danielle Brandon Daniel what stands Dan sorry what stands out for you with the women this weekend yeah, really, Tia's comeback. I don't think we expected to see her struggle so early on in the weekend, but on top of that story is the youth that pushed her there. So we have a handful of very young athletes coming into the sport who didn't back down from the challenge and put Tia in a place that she was unfamiliar with. But the champ responded. She's been responding all weekend. I was curious to see, is she going to fight? Is it going to affect her? And in natural Tia fashion, she clawed her way back in and is in a commanding lead heading into these final workouts. That she is. And we've had all sorts of weather here this weekend. We've had heat. We've had rain. Thankfully, to go well, they've set up a warm-up area for our athletes. Dan, we're coming into the final day of competition. What would the mindset be like of the athletes today? Yeah, at this point on Sunday, you're tired, you're sore. Things aren't necessarily going how you want them to go. You mentioned the weather. We've had schedule changes. So all those things can throw off your mental game. But really, you want to focus on what you can control and what you cannot. So these athletes need to stay poised for the last day of competition and really I'm, walk I'm looking for who are the athletes who are answering the question of, do I still want it today? Do I still want to comp come out and compete no matter where I'm at on the leaderboard? And with the field that we have, I think we're going to see that. Earlier on in the week, I caught up with Todd Melanie from Noble to chat all things leaders jersey.
Kayla Banfield here. I'm with Todd from Noble. We're standing in front of the leader's jersey, which is what athletes get to wear when they're at the top of the leaderboard. Todd, what is the process of making the leader's jersey? Well, we have to stay ready first and foremost, and we have a full back of house alterations, screen printing, and heat press station um, equipped with the graphics pre-made for every athlete that's competing at the CrossFit Games. And within 15 minutes, as the leaderboard updates, we can print new jersey head to toe for each athlete to get it on them prior to them heading out onto the field. And it's expanded since last year from just the leader's jersey. We've got more on offer this year. What's available to athletes and fans? Yeah, so last year we introduced the limited edition Toomey Leader jersey um, at retail and online, and it was extremely popular. So this year we've expanded that athlete kit to include apparel and limited edition Runner Plus and Trainer Plus that's branded with Tia's name on the outside and a, a banner from every year that she's been the fittest on earth. So if you're at the CrossFit Games, make sure you head down to the Noble Retail Store. If you're at home, jump online to grab your Leader's jersey. We've seen, we've seen a few different athletes this year in the leader's jersey. Hayley Adams, Emma Lawson, Mal O'Brien and Tia Claire Toomey for the women. Over on the men's side, just Ricky Garrard and Justin Medeiros have, have been wearing that leader's jersey this weekend. Dan, it must be such a special thing to be able to wear that white and red on the field. Yeah, back in my day, we actually didn't have <laughs> leaders' jerseys, so it's a really cool addition as our sport continues to evolve. There's really some pros and cons that comes with it. The cons are that you have a target on your back. Everybody's looking at you. You are the one to beat on the floor. It also might put a little bit of extra pressure on you because now you can't blend in. You stand out like a sore thumb out on the field. Now, the pros to that are that it does give you the confidence. I'm in control. I'm in command. And on the other hand, all the athletes are watching you, potentially pacing their events off of what you're doing. So you do have a little bit of control and command while you're wearing that leader jersey. A big thank you to our sponsors, Noble. Get a free towel with your purchase. Use code GAMES22 at checkout. Head to nobleproject.com slash CrossFit for details while supplies last. Looking at our schedule for the rest of the day, there is still plenty on tap for the final day of competition. Individuals are going from 11 until 2, and our teams are hitting it from 2 till 3. Earlier on today, Boz caught up with our athletes to go through individual event 12 and 13. All right, athletes, thank you guys for being flexible this morning. We've got two final events to give you guys the reveal. So here they are. First one that's coming up next is called the back nine. So Griff's gonna do it for us. Here we go. Count with me, ready? Go. One, yoke walk. 665 for the guys, 65 for the guys. 485 for the women, 485 for the women. So that's one rep, count with me. Ready, Griff? That's the second rep, that's the third rep. 315 for the guys, 215 for the girls. We got three reps in the hole. Let's go, Griff. That's the fourth rep. Fifth rep. Sixth rep. Turns around and we play it back. Two more on the front squat, one more on the yoke. Finish. Let's go, Griff. 475 deadlift for the gentlemen, 315 for the ladies. And here we go. We've got a four minute time cap for this effort. Come on, man. That's it. Nice and steady.
When he gets the yoke finished, he's going to run through and onto the platform. So once again, one yoke, two front squats, three deadlifts, two front squats, one yoke, finish. 665, 485 on the yoke, 315, 215 on the front squat, 475, 315 on the deadlift. Chuck's going to give you guys the details. Next up, we're going to finish. This is your final event for the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. We're going to start seated on the rower. There's going to be a 1,000 meter row. Now, you guys know the row is kind of boring, right? It's a throwaway. Everybody says it's a throwaway when you put it at the front of a workout. I heard that a lot last year. So to make it a little bit more interesting, pace is going to be dictated to you guys somewhat. If you do not finish the row in 315 or less for the men, you just don't advance in the workout. For the women, if you do not finish the row in 340, you do not advance to the barbell. Once you've done the row, you're up, and you've got 50 thrusters. 95 for the guys, 65 for the ladies. You're going to advance forward every 10 repetitions until you've got your 50. Just keep going, Allie. So that's 20, 30, 40. You guys can see the blue marks. 50. When the last thruster is done, you're going to go over the bar. You're on the middle bar. You're going to do 20 bar muscle ups. When you've done 20 bar muscle ups, you're going to move to the red bar for 10 more for a total of 30 bar muscle ups. And when you finish that last rep, you're going to hop up onto the platform and your CrossFit games are over. So this is a variation on Jackie, for those of you that know your CrossFit games and the uh, CrossFit history. This is a workout that's really common, old school. We're calling it Jackie Pro, because that's what you guys are, pro. 315 or faster on the rower, 340 or faster on the rower for the ladies, 50 thrusters, 95, 65, 30 bar muscle ups, broken up 20 and 10. Chuck's got you guys in the back for the brief. We'll see you guys out on the field. Thank you very much. Dan, another two great events. Going to be entertaining for us to watch at the very least. What are your thoughts? Yeah, taking a look at individual event 12, those athletes are probably frothing to get onto the barbell. Now, the thing that that's going to cause a problem for is all of the work that they've done all week. Those weights might be something they could hit on a fresh day. They're going to be really difficult to be moving that barbell around at these weights when they're tired. None of that's going to matter, though, if you have not practiced that yoke. Getting it off the floor and getting it moving can be very tricky, and that can make or break that event right from the start. That'll do it for us here at Day at the Games. For Dan Bailey, I'm Kayla Banfield. We'll leave you with individual, individual event 12, and we'll see you at the end of the day show. What makes a good coach? Well, we, we have the definition of effective coaching, but at the heart of great coaching, first thing is you have to care. And what we try to teach everyone coming into the level one is regardless of the ability level of who walks into your gym, that person deserves a cue. Whether that be someone who is coming to their first CrossFit class or a games athlete like Chandler Smith, our ability as coaches and our effectiveness is directly impacted by our ability to have someone leaving our class better and have learned something new than when they walked in the door.
Sports nutrition has become more in the forefront of my preparation and getting ready for the CrossFit Games. Trifecta makes my life easier by taking the guesswork out. I think at the games there's a lot of things that are thrown at us. Having your nutrition dialed in gives you peace of mind. It's something that you don't have to think about. Trifecta is a great tool to help people chase their goals. My goal is to win the CrossFit Games. You don't get to do what you love if you're in pain. Nice and slow, slow and smooth. Good, back to the middle. And right ear, right shoulder. We're here testing the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games workouts. Rusty's role is to make sure the athletes are able to perform to the best of their abilities so that we can do our part to ensure this year's test is the best that it can be. Here at Rusty, what we do is we find things that are holding you back, things that are causing you pain, that limits your ability to not only work out really well, but to just live pain-free, do things you love to do. We find what's wrong with you, we get you out of pain, and then we show you ways to keep yourself healthy so you don't have to keep coming back to us. Thank you, appreciate it. Here at Proven, we strive to be the best in every facet. So when we created our gym, we knew we had to have the best for our floor. flooring that could withstand the hardest training sessions. We needed the flooring to be durable and reliable. Time and time again, Surface Coat finds themselves being used at the highest levels of competition. So Proven had no doubt that Surface Coat was the floor for us. Ooh, here we are again. I've always wanted to do that. Are you ready to get the party started? We're back, baby! <laughs> While the games are fun and exciting to open, is the reason that I started doing this whole thing. It's my birthday. I feel like I should be able to choose the workout. Four reps remaining for Justin Medeiros. I want to win the games and a team as well. We know they're the best. They know they're the best. They can be beat. This is what all the work was for. All she does is eat, sleep, train. Everything I do is with intensity and purpose. It's kind of a coach's dream. That's it, deep I am baby. constantly in pursuit of helping people reach their maximum potential. Us together, working together, and pushing each other, it's going to be scary. It's really scary. I want to make it back to the games. I want to have my best year yet. I'm ready to run through a wall, man. <laughs> Let's, Let's, the table. Let's do it. Are y'all ready? Let the games begin.
Only two events remain here before we crown the fittest man and fittest woman on earth at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. We are inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram and Mike Arsenault is down on the competition floor. Event 12. Just uh, enjoy your posterior chain while you have it. What posterior chain, John? <laughs> I've been watching the events that we had so far. This is a immense test of strength for these athletes in only what we call nine little reps. Recipe for success presented by Trifecta is and for all my gamers out there, we're engaged in some Mortal Kombat. <laughs> test your might, and at the end, you're going to have to push yourself to the absolute limit if you want to be successful in this event. Let's go down to the competition floor. That's where Mike Arsenault is standing by. Well, only 25 points separate the top three men on the leaderboard, and the separator for this event number 12 could be the deadlift, 475 pounds, the heaviest deadlift ever programmed in a CrossFit Games competition. Of course, this is called the back nine. If Ricky, Roman, or Justin get 100 points here in event number 12, well, that could be a tap-in birdie to a CrossFit Games championship coming up in just a little bit. Three heats of 10. Willie George out of France has had some big moments here inside the Coliseum. He currently sits in 22nd place overall. And the big thing here is just these first couple of heats are going to be watched by the last one to see. We are just not sure what type of toll has been taken on these athletes so far and what these bars are going to look like on the back half of this. Stand by. Only nine total reps, and we start with the 665-pound yoke carry. They got to get to that yellow line at the other end of the floor. And Andre Uday on the bottom of your screen is out front early. Once they get into that line, it is time to front squat. These guys followed by Willie George and Jay Crouch. Now they, it is a front squat, so they got to get below parallel, and you can clean the first rep, so you don't have to catch it in a power position and squat isolated. Heinrich Hapalainen just got buried by that barbell. Alex Vino is on the front squats as well. And now Uday and George are stepping up to the deadlift. Now these cannot be touch and go. And George is making the turn. He's back to the two front squats. Second is in the bag for Willie George as he moves to the yoke. And Willie George is all by himself and will set the early mark to beat. He's got to get himself across the finish line and Willie George takes heat one. 129.25 seconds. Alex Vigneault and Jake Crouch are also on their way back, as is Andre Uday, who's back on the yoke. So Uday looking to lock up a second place finish here in the opening heat. Jake Crouch, far end of the floor, is on to the yoke. Now Uday is across. Jake Crouch just about done with that yoke carry. He will step across the finish line, and now here comes Alex Vino. Four-minute time cap here. Still plenty of men left out on the competition floor. Heinrich Hapalainen stepping back to the yoke. 90 seconds before we hit the time cap. But Tim Paulson's moving to the yoke as well. Sean, this is just a perfect example of how volatile this event can be. The difference it's going to take on the leaderboard as far as time. On nine, I don't want to say simple reps because there is nothing simple about this, but only nine repetitions and athletes being separated by 60 to 90 seconds. Apple is through. Now one minute remaining, and here comes 
Tim Paulson. Lucas Upnix and Guillaume Briand are on to the yoke together. Upnix in the dark top, Briand in the light. Enrico Zanoni belting up for his yoke carry. He's the other man on the floor here. 30 seconds to go. Ukniks has about 10 feet left. And he's going to get in. And that'll do it. So Brial and Zanoni will get capped. It's Willie George with the top time with two heats remaining. One minute, 29.25 seconds. He was so fast on the back half of this event. He kicked things off. 6.65 on the yoke. Heaviest weight we've seen for the men in the yoke carry as Willie Shores obviously can clean the bar from the floor, but once he got to the deadlift, that's so fast, thought he'd only did one rep, that's how fast he was. We said, anything is really possible in this. There's so much up and down that can happen. Top five in that heat led by Willie George goes sub 130. Andre Uday will finish in second, followed by Crouch Vino and then Heinrich Hapalainen, who had trouble with that first bar bubble that got things sorted to take fifth place in the heat. Quick break, back with heat number two for the men.
Event number 12 of 13 continues here inside the uh, Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, as we're getting closer to crowning the fittest man on earth. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram, and Mike Arsenault is down on the competition floor. Event 12, the back nine, and it is heavy. It is heavy. It's the heaviest yoke we've seen for the men and the heaviest deadlift we've seen in CrossFit competition history. And just the fact that it's only nine total reps being scored here, this is a volatile test for these athletes. And test we will, test your might. These athletes engage in a barbell version of Mortal Kombat and pushing it to the limit with how quick this event goes, you're gonna have to do a lot of things you are uncomfortable with to fight to the finish. Second of three heats, Guimajeros is on a roll right now. 11th place overall, but he has finished first in two of the last three events. And Guy being one of the most powerful and strongest athletes in the field, he has another opportunity to do the same. He had that epic performance last night in the sandbag ladder, and he and Nick Matthew <laughs> tied in the tie break. Also standing side by side in the middle lanes of the competition floor in lanes five and lane six. <laughs> Time to beat Velocity Willie George, 129.25 seconds. And it is Mahero, Dallin Pepper, and Travis Mayer out front early here. Mayer just ahead of Dallin Pepper. Just to get a good idea of how heavy this is, just watching the stability that these athletes have to do. Think about what we went through last night with the heavy sandbag clean and then the kettlebell clean and jerks earlier this morning. These weights probably feel a lot heavier than they normally do in the gym. They are right to work. He squat cleans the first. He got through his two reps. Now they go to three deadlifts at 475. Mayeros and Mayer are the only two men on that portion right now. They have to drop in between every rep, which makes it much more challenging to pull it from a dead stop. Now Dallin Pepper stepping up to the deadlifts along with Yonikowski. Mayeros and Mayer making the turn at the same time and back to the 315-pound barbell for two front squats. No problem for Mayeros, and that looked like a warm-up. Now he's back to the yoke. And you're getting a little taste of everything here, Sean. You have the odd object with the strongman implement with the yoke. It's testing your midline stability and stamina as well as your leg strength. You've got the heavy dead. You've got the clean. You've got a little bit of everything in this test. Here goes Guy Mahedos as Travis Mayer is now just stepping under his yoke. 129.25. Still the time to beat Guy across the finish line. And right now that's the second best time we've seen. So Willie George's time will last into the third and final heat. Now here comes Travis Mayer. Noah Olsen is on to the yoke. Olsen in his ninth straight CrossFit Games appearance. Currently sits in 13th place overall. Olsen has finished inside the top 10 every year except for one. That was back in 2016 when he took 15th. And now it's Matthew and Pepper fighting it out. And Nick Matthew again edging out a fellow athlete at the finish line, and this time it's Dallin Pepper, and we have seen them all week long, the Nick Matthew cheering section up there in those neon shirts. Here comes Janikowski. Spencer Panchik is your leader on the floor right now. Panchik is working through his final set of front squats. One more look at the finish between Matthew and Pepper. Matthew finds himself in another nail biter at the end. And what Matthew was doing, he was walking it in and dropping it forward where Dallin dropped it straight down and then tried to run across. He had the momentum going into the finish line. The 
30 seconds remain. Spencer Panchik is trying to work his way across the finish line. Here comes Brent Fakowski in the black. And at these weights, Sean, it's really hard to go faster. 15 to seconds. Stay in control. But Brent Fakowski is super consistent. Spencer's going to make it. Fakowski with five seconds to go. He'll get across the finish line. That'll leave Morad and Sager as the only two men to not finish. But Guy Mayeros in 139.43 seconds. Second best time so far we've seen in the event. And Willie George still has the top mark at 129.25. Guima Harris a little bit behind after the yoke. But on once he got to the cleans, what this guy can do with the barbell is just absolutely beautiful to watch. But just see how heavy that 665 is. You have one of the strongest men in competition just shaking uncontrollably under the weight of that yoke. The Mayeros at 139.43, followed by Travis Mayer and Noah Olson, and then a pair of rookies, Nick Matthew and Dallin Pepper as Matthew edges out Pepper by about four tenths of a second. Step aside for a second when we come back, the third and final heat of the back nine. Stay with us, everybody, here in Madison, Wisconsin. Two events remain, and for the first time in a long time, we don't know who is going to wind up where on the podium at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Thanks for being with us, everyone. Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram, and it's Mike Arsenault down on the competition floor. Coming into the event, only 25 points separate Ricky Garrard from Justin Medeiros, and Krennikov is only up by two on Ricky Garrard, and we've talked all week long about execution, and that's a big reason why Justin Medeiros is in the lead right now. Ricky's been the only other athlete besides Medeiros to wear the leader jersey, but he's had a couple missteps that are outside the realm of fitness. A drop of the bag, stuck on the yoke. These missteps have been six point differentials, and he's had three of them. In the last event, Ricky was ahead of Justin in the back right part of your screen. He has to break on his very last rep and that opened the door back up for Justin Medeiros and someone else sneaked in between. And of those three little mistakes, Sean, they have totaled up to 18 points. They need only be seven out if it were for them. You have to be flawless at the top. And in an event like this, where it's heavy barbells under high intensity, there's still no room for error. This is a battle to the end. It's a test of your might, as well as your ability to push yourself to the limit. 
There is no more room for mistakes. You cannot give away points anymore if you want to get yourself on top of that podium. Down to the floor with Mike Arsenault. And if here's the second, Yo Block will be the separator here in event number 12. Seems to be giving the athletes the most difficulty thus far. Neither of our top three have ever touched a yoke like this. It, this was last seen in 2018, 665 pounds. So Roman, Justin, or Ricky have not tried this implement just yet. Chase, the question for you is, is the best technique hands behind like a back squat or hands on the side of the yoke? What will get these guys across the finish line faster? Being of the test we've had so far that have been crushing their midline stability, the heavy sandbag, even this morning, pig flips. You got to get the hands underneath the yoke to squeeze those traps in together to stabilize that core just a little bit more. Overall leaders will be right in the middle of the floor. Again, we know who, we just don't know where. Gerard Medeiros and Krennikov have separated themselves from the field. Now it's a matter of who winds up with what medal. And with the events that we've had, that these three have been going back and forth in, they have been incredible tests of grit, incredible tests of durability, and this is shaping up to be another one of those tests between these three athletes. Final heat underway, time to beat 129.25 seconds. If Ricky Garrard and Roman Krennikov want to erase their deficit, as Garrard is struggling right now on the yoke, he's towards the back. Jeff Adler smoked that thing. Adler already onto the barbell. Roman Krennikov advancing to the barbell and a no rep early for Adler. Adler's just trying to move a little bit too quick. We saw the same thing for Ricky Garrard on the yoke. You can't race the yoke. You just have to keep it consistent from start to finish. Krennikov is onto the deadlifts. Madero's onto the deadlifts. Garrard's still working on the front squats. But I was mentioning if Garrard and Krennikov want to erase that deficit in one event, they're going to have to beat Madeiras by a pretty sizable margin here, about 10 spots in the overall standings. And they need the help. That's not the help they got last year when Justin Madeiras is trying to get his first fittest man on earth title. Madeiras and Krennikov have made the turn. Madeiras is in the leader's jersey. Krennikov is throwing onto the yoke, but Jeff Adler is way out in front right now and looking to win the event. Now here comes Krennikov and Madeiras. Adler. Flawless victory! Here comes Krennikov, but Madaris is gaining! And Madaris has the lead, and Justin Madaris is going to go unbroken to the finish! Pat, take that. Sam Quant just gets ahead of Roman Krennikov at the end. Now here comes Felder. Now Hopper and Ricky Garrard is way off the lead pace. Rubinson came across in ninth. He's the last man to finish so far. Garrard has got to hurry. He is bleeding points right now. Garrard is in, and he will take 13th. Now we're talking about trying to take down Madero's 13th is not gonna it's not gonna happen, but 13th isn't a bad finish. Everybody was just so unbelievably fast in this heat. It was Justin Madero's his dad. Roman Krennikov was out front early as Saxon Panzik is in, but just like we saw in the last event, a late charge from Justin Madero's. Talk a lot about what athletes are going to have to do to take down Justin. We saw Justin do the same thing last year. He's not waiting around for anybody else to dictate the pace to him, to try to take points from him. And what a true champion does is they go out there and take it for themselves. Adler was the man out front early. Had a 
Babo on his first front squat, but now here's the finish as Predikov put the yoke down, and that was enough for Medeiros to take the lead and come in, in third place in the event, and Ricky Garrard will take 13th in the event. Jeff Adler with the event win. Willie George from Heat 1 is going to finish second. Justin Medeiros has yet to win an event, just like we saw last year, but he has been extremely consistent. Third place for Medeiros. Let's go down to Mike Arsenault. Jeff, what a performance here on event number 12, your second event win of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. What was it like lifting uh, the heavy front squat and the heavy deadlift after a grueling four days of competition thus far? It's uh, barbells for me, heavy barbells, especially in this setting, like going quickly is what I enjoy the most. So um, it was just easy for me. I think you put the CrossFit you put the CrossFit world on notice with your first place performance in the semifinals at the Atlas Games. Your improvement has been exponential in the past couple of years. What do you attribute it to? Uh, I've been working hard, been working hard on my engine, and I, I'm actually more proud of the cardio workouts than this one because I knew that this one was a, a win for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm more happy than uh, other workouts than this one. One event to go, I know you've said the secret all season long, has been the Jacuz. Is everyone invited to the uh, Jacuz after the CrossFit Games wraps up later this afternoon? Yeah, tonight everybody's invited. Let's go. Sounds like one hell of a crawfish boil. <laughs> there is Jeff's fiance and coach, Caroline Lambray. So Jeff Adler, an event win. Quick break. Women up next here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. The 2022 Noble CrossFit Games are sponsored by Noble. No excuses, no shortcuts, no gimmicks, no tomorrows. Noble. Rogue, the official equipment supplier of the Noble CrossFit Games. Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit. GoWa, the official mobility partner of the Noble CrossFit Games. And Guaranteed Rate, the official mortgage company of the Noble CrossFit Games. Let's get started, guys. We already kind of chatted a bit, but let's go around and share where you're at, where your head's at, just one or two sentences, What, how you're coming to the meeting. I'll start. CrossFit affiliate roundtables are moderator-led, small group conversations. Affiliate owners can gather together consistently to celebrate wins, identify weaknesses. In that time, we share all sorts of things that affiliate owners would talk about. Oh, my gym and your gym sound surprisingly similar, so. Yeah. You get back what you put in. So if you're really looking for, for advice on business and business only, there's a round table that will do that. If you're looking to be like, man, I just need some emotional support as an affiliate owner, there's a round table that'll do that too. We get into this business because we love exercise. And what we discover is that we need support. There's so many conversations to be had. And we're just trying to open that door so that they can connect. What does it take? How do I train? What do I eat? How do I recover? How much do I sleep? How do I react? What if this happens? What if that happens? Am I prepared? It all adds up. It's not about what I do. It's about what I don't do. 
No excuses. No shortcuts. No gimmicks. No tomorrows. Where I am is exactly where I'm supposed to be. My name's Rich Froning, four-time individual CrossFit Games champion, five-time affiliate cup champion. As I've gotten more advanced in my career, nutrition has taken more of a front seat to go along with my training, and RP has helped me over the last couple years dial that in and take the guesswork out of what I'm doing. Nutrition timing is a huge piece, as well as nutrition or macro count. And currently, I'm eating 100 grams of fat, 200 grams of protein, and about 500 grams of carbohydrates. We've played around with that over the years, but that's kind of what we've settled on, especially this time of year. RP Diet has helped me a ton, and can help you too. As a 10-year affiliate, I would advise somebody who's new and starting out in the CrossFit world to be passionate in your pursuit of education, to hone in your craft and your skill, which CAP programming helps us do, and really take the opportunity with the time that's freed up to get to dig in deep with your members and your community, get to know what motivates them and triggers them and keeps them excited about coming back.
action continues on the fifth and final day of competition for the individuals here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. We are inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, and in a matter of hours, we will crown the fittest man and woman on Earth. Thanks for being with us, everyone. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram, and Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. Event 12 is the back nine, and here come the heavy barbells. There they come. You asked for them all weekend long. Be careful what you ask for. We've got that heavy yoke carry into the front squat, deadlift, front squat, and then work on our way back to the start. Recipe for success is presented by Trifecta. It's a test of wills. It's a test of strength. It is a test of might. If you want to get through this to the end on top, those top three spots, you have to push it to the limit. There is no room to pace. 10 women in this first of three heats. Lane number six, Karin Freyova, comes in in 22nd place overall, but coming off her two best finishes so far of the competition. Eighth place finish, third place finish in the previous event, and she's one of those athletes that has the strength and athleticism to navigate her way through this. As it's one thing on paper, it's another thing on the competition floor. First heat has begun. And Alice Gazan and Christine Kohlenbrander and Sung Young Choi, your top three. Gazan in the middle of the floor will be the first woman done with that 485 pound yoke carry. Now onto the 215 pound front squat. Two reps here. Gazan and Kohlenbrander, Choi and Prevo, your top four. Down to the 315 pound deadlift. Watch for Prevo to make a move. She's down in lane number nine. But we're talking about deadlift. Deadlift and Caroline Prevo are synonymous with it. So when she gets to that front squat, she may be able to catch up some ground here on the back side of the deadlift. Gazan has made the turn. She's onto her second and final set of two front squats. Colin Brander is there as well. Colin Brander is going to be first to the yoke. Now here comes Gazan. Now Gazan had a faster yoke carry on the front half. And Gazan is starting to creep up here on Colin Brander, but Colin Brander is staying ahead. Colin Brander going to hold off Gazan. Colin Brander better hurry. She's got to get across the finish line. Oh Gazan is behind her. What are you doing? She was celebrating and took a look to her left and saw Gazan and beats her by three tenths of a second. <laughs> so Young Choi in the black is on to the yoke. And that's Rebecca Fusile who is unable to even move that yoke right now. Sung Young Choi and Carolyn Prevo on the right side is on to the 485 pound yoke. Choi ditches the yoke. She is done, and here comes Carolyn Prevo. Let's take a look one more time at the finish. Colin Brander on the left doesn't realize Kazan is right behind her and starts waving to the crowd. The judge is waving her through, the fans are waving her through, and Kazan nearly caught her. Really, and that's. Yeah, the first heat, not a major issue as far as you know the end of their weekend, but when we're looking at, we've got a lot of movement potentially at the top of this leaderboard. The podium not settled. Horvath is on a big charge after this morning's win, and it's little things like that that might have massive implications for your top three. Here comes Karin Freyova. 45 seconds left. And she looks to be the only athlete with a realistic chance. Well, now, no, it will be Freyova. It looks like Turi Helgadotter may be going to the yoke. She's just going to the chalk right now. Freyova's going to take a break. 30 seconds left. 
Jones here, and hands are wide on that. What you see some athletes do is they'll actually put their hands inside the yoke and push against that to help stabilize that upper part of her midline. Brayova is done, and she'll have about 10 seconds to spare as she crosses the finish line. But Christine Kohlenbrander with the top time now at 133.39 seconds with two heats remaining. Alex Kazan, the rookie, will take second. Sung Young Choi, impressive in that heat. She'll finish third, followed by Prebo and Freova. It ain't over till it's over. Get across the finish line. Take a quick break. Two heats remaining for the women. Final day of competition continues here inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. We are glad you're with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Chase Ingram and Nikki Brazier down on the competition floor. Event 12 is heavy. The back nine kind of looks like my back nine, except it might on the golf course. Terrible. <laughs> this is some heavy, heavy barbells for these athletes and only nine scored repetitions throughout there, but four 
85 on the yoke. Test your might, test your strength. If you want to win this event, you're going to do a lot of things you're not comfortable with. But how heavy this yoke is, Sean, 485 for the women. Look at the volunteers. It takes two grown men to move this yoke the same distance as one of our female athletes here in this event. Ten women in this second of three heats. Danny Spiegel in lane three has the potential to smash this. I mean, she's been on a pretty much a good roll so far. Obviously, her performance last night in the sandbag clean. And this is right in her wheelhouse. You got some heavy barbells. You have to move at speed. We know she's strong, but she's also very fast in these short sprint style events. Danny Spiegel with two straight finishes of second or better. She won the sandbag ladder in convincing fashion than in the Alpaca earlier today. She finished second in that event. Five pound yoke carry, and it's Amanda Barnhart and Danny Spiegel out front. Barnhart's at the top of your screen, Spiegel's toward the bottom. Spiegel is done. Spiegel and Magawa are the first three women to the barbell. Barnhart had a reset at the bottom, and Spiegel just got spit out the back. Two front squats down for Barnhart. Spiegel at it again. And we saw the same thing happen to Adler, and he still had the score to beat. He recovered very nicely. Barnhart is already through two of those three deadlifts before she'll make the turn back. And now here comes Barnhart back to the front squats. Gabby Magawa is done as well. It's the top two of Barnhart, Magawa. Magawa's in the middle of the floor in the long black pants. Now here comes Spiegel back to the front squats. Magawa and Barnhart to the yoke at the same time. Barnhart took a look to her left and stepped on the gas a little bit to get under that yoke to catch up with Magawa. And now Barnhart out front. Trying to beat in the bottom left hand part of your screen to watch Christine Kohlenbrander and Amanda Barnhart is going to take that down. 124.37 seconds for Barnhart. Magawa's across. That'll be the second best time at 127.68. And here comes Danny Spiegel. And Spiegel is through. 144.62 for her. And here comes Emma McQuaid on her final yoke carry. Tim McQuaid has her hands behind on the sides, but you also want to push into the sides. It's going to compress your scaps together behind your shoulders. It's going to create for a much more stable core stability position for that yoke. There's Samantha Briggs, who often trains and coaches Emma McQuaid. Sam Briggs, who can run faster with an empty yoke than I can without one. <laughs> now Ellie Turner. About four feet to go. Jacqueline Dahlstrom and Paige Semenza are carrying the yoke back as Turner crosses the finish line. Dahlstrom, who was so impressive last night in that sandbag ladder, took second place in that event, is Christy O'Connell and Semenza on the floor along with Lucy Campbell and Matilda Guards. Paige Semenza is done. Here comes Christy O'Connell. Matilda Guards at the top of your screen is on her second and final set of front squats. 
misses that, but here's Amanda Barnhart after she got done. Now, where she made squats. her move is because she never took her hands off the barbell. When the seconds matter, the difference of two to three seconds between her and Gabby and Ragawa, those little details are the little things these athletes are going to need to try to beat a time like that. And as long as she flashes her hands like she did at the bottom, that's a good rep. Amanda Barnhart, your new top time. 124.37 seconds, followed by Gabby Magawa. Danny Spiegel at 144.62, followed by McQuaid and Ellie Turner. Two events until history. We are inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, as we are set to crown the fittest woman on earth, and it looks like for the sixth year in a row, it will be Tia Toomey, but two events remain. Thanks for being with us, everyone. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram, and it's Nikki Brazer down on the competition floor. The overall standings coming into the 12th event of this 
competition. It's Tia Toomey by more than 100 points over Mal O'Brien. Danielle Brandon has moved into third. Tia Toomey just needs to avoid a disaster here. And it will be smooth sailing to victory. Event 12 is the back nine, and Chase, it is heavy. It is heavy indeed. You think you're strong? Then show me what you can do with all that strength. And these athletes are going to have an opportunity to 485 pounds on that yoke. Heavy cleans at 215. Deadlifts at 315. It is a test of strength. It is a test of will. It is a test of might. If you want to win this, you're going to push yourself beyond the limits that you think you have. Ten women in this third and final heat. Tia Toomey will be right in the middle of the floor. Danielle Brandon is trying to hold off Emma Lawson and Laura Horvath, who is making a charge. Brooke Wells will be in lane number one. And for more on her, let's send it down to Nikki Brazier. During this event, she has the highest listed deadlift at 432 pounds. And so far, every woman who has crossed the finish line fastest has saved precious seconds on those barbells. Let's see if she's got what it takes to cross the finish line first. Brooke Wells is in ninth place, but she is only 30 points out of fifth. Daniel Brandon in the center of your screen is in the middle of nowhere, 56 out of second, but only 48 out of fifth. Here we go. 485 pounds on the yoke. They have to carry it from the first yellow line to the second. And it's Brooke Wells who's out front early, followed by Laura Horvath, Mal O'Brien, and Tia Toomey. Tia Toomey, your leader overall. Mal O'Brien sitting in second, but watch out for Laura Horvath. She has just come off an event win earlier this morning. And if you think about yokes in the Coliseum, you synonymize that with Laura Horvath. Horvath and Toomey get to the deadlift at the same time. Three reps here at 315. They have to let go of the barbell after every rep. And now Brooke Wells is there, and here comes Mal O'Brien. Horvath and Toomey making the turn at the same time. Horvath, as we mentioned, has been making a charge at the overall standings and could find herself in the top three. Danielle Brandon still hasn't finished her yoke carry. Danielle Brandon is getting pinned by this yoke carry, but we've seen this before between Tia Toomey and Laura Horvath. Laura Horvath trying to win her second event of the day, and she is ahead of Toomey. Horvath is in, and Tia Toomey is one event away from history. And now Brooke Wells across the finish line. That is big for all three of them in the positions in which they are on the leaderboard. Tia Toomey extends her lead one step away from her sixth championship. But Horvath, who is in fifth, on the outside looking in, was only 48 points behind Danielle Brandon, who's just getting to the clean bar. Here comes Cara Saunders, who finished second to Tia Toomey. In 2017, the first year Toomey won the title of fitness on Earth. It was the closest finish we have ever seen in the overall standings. Saunders finished second to Toomey by just two points. And now she is done. Sean, as he's done, and looking at Daniel Brandon, who I said she was 56 points out of second, but only 48 points clear of fifth. Here comes Mal O'Brien, the 18-year-old who was the rookie of the year last year and could become the youngest woman in games history to finish on the podium. Laura Horvath is going to get 100 points for her event win, and now the question becomes, how many points can Danielle Brandon get? It's not just that. It's not just this one heat. We've already had two other heats prior to this, and all of those times are now coming into play. It's not just these 10. We've had 20 athletes already do this event. Al O'Brien was the last woman to cross the finish line, and she took 12th in the event, and that is worth 67 points. Daniel Brandon is trying to hit this clean. Laura Horvath is watching the clock be her best friend at the moment. Brandon is through one, and Daniel Brandon has been dealing with a nagging back issue throughout the season. Still pinned out there too, Sean. Haley Adams, Emma Lawson. Those athletes were sitting in fourth and sixth 
Laura Horvath has a legit shot to jump into the top three, but Brooke Wells, she was in ninth. She was only 10 points out of seven. But with Haley Adams and Emma Lawson and Danielle Brandon, Brooke Wells may be looking at one of the best finishes of her career after what happened to her last year with that devastating el elbow injury. Final seconds here, so all the women on the competition floor are going to get capped. And Laura Horvath is rocketing up the standings. A day and a half ago, she was sitting in 15th place. She wasn't even in the final heat, which is usually the top 10. And over the last three events, she may be in a third place position. Laura Horvath on the right, Tia Toomey on the left. We've seen these two go head to head in a yoke carry. And it's the same result we saw nearly four years ago that Laura Horvath is unstoppable when it comes to the yoke. Anytime you find yourself going head to head with Tia Toomey, you're doing something right. Laura Horvath, second straight event win. Tia Toomey's gonna take second. Brooke Wells, Amanda Barnhart, and Gabby Magawa rounding out the top five down to the competition floor. Laura Horvath is with Nikki Brazier. Laura, some of these barbells were stopping these women in their tracks, but not you. What were these weights like in comparison to how you train every day? I mean, it's the last day of the weekend, so they felt harder than they should have. But with the adrenaline and the amazing crowd, they felt pretty light. Congratulations. One more to go here. Good luck. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Straight. into the final event. More action to come. Stay with us here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games.
the quest to find the fittest is coming to an end. One event remains at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games, and we are inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Mike Arsenault is down on the competition floor, and for the first time since 2014, we are finishing with a twist on a benchmark. A benchmark we've seen at the regional level, but we're beefing it up. A classic benchmark test called Jackie. The 1,000 meter row bind, 50 thrusters, a little bit heavier weight, but finishing with bar muscle ups. But the trick is at the start. Be smart when you get there, and whatever you got left, that last bar muscle up, better be the last one you could possibly do. Three heats of 10 men. Before we get to that, let's send it to Mike Arsenault. Yes, as Chase was mentioning, there's a wrinkle to this pro version of Jackie. Yes, these athletes are at the row 1,000 meters. However, they have to complete that row within 3 minutes and 15 seconds on the dot. So we'll see the 1,000 go down to zero. And for the 1,000 meters, they're going to have to hold the pace around 137 and below for the entirety of the 1,000 meters before they can move on to the thrusters and then finally the bar muscle ups. Well, when it comes to machines, Tim Paulson in lane seven, we know that he can go to a much different place than a lot of people. Oh, we things. saw that on display on the Echo Press Friday night, but he's also a fantastic rower. And there's a tale of two athletes a little bit in here. If you're a, a specialist in one area or the other, Tim's gonna be on the good on the row, but we saw him. He's definitely good with a barbell as well. This is an event that shakes up well for him. But there's just a lot of fit guys in this heat. It's anybody's game. Kick things off with that 1,000 meter row and talking to Adrian Bosman about this event. He wanted to force the pace. A lot of times in events like this, and you know this really well, athletes want to pace it so they can really make the most on what they're strong at. No, you're going hard on the rower. And people will want to pace it because of the weight on the barbell. If you look at traditional Jackie, it's a 1,000 meter row. It is 50 thrusters, but with only a 45 pound barbell and then chin over bar pull up. So when you look at traditional Jackie, the row was significant as far as time gain on other athletes. But when you add weight to the bar at 95 pounds on the thrusters, you increase the skill level to bar muscle ups, you would usually back off the pace of the row. Adrian is not having any of that. He's gonna make them row at a very strong pace going into a heavier weighted thruster. Balls are maintaining that 135 pace. Athletes will get one rep for every calorie that they complete. With the 10 rep mark, they'll get to move on to the 50 thrusters at 95 pounds. This Ufniks. Now the pace you need to hold is somewhere just under 137. And when you're using that pace, that middle number is your average 500 meter row pace. So you're essentially doubling that number. The trick is, is when you're trying to pace on the row, you want to make sure you're always staying under not always tipping under slightly, just to be sure. And that's what we're talking about. We're trying to be smart on the road. Your pace is essentially dictated for you. Now, how can you get yourself through this 1,000 meter the easiest way possible before going into those 50 thrusters at 95 pounds? There's a barbell that awaits. After this 1,000 meter row, Guillaume Briel, Jay Crouch, Tim Paulson, Warren, and Vigo. All towards the front with Briel slightly in the lead here. That's Jay Crouch. Pulling at 134. Usually when we're starting off in a thousand meter row, we, we try to be like, hey, I think uh, I have a guest. They're probably going to be off around 310 to 315. That's pretty much a, a, a for sure thing now. Morad, Vino, Hapalainen, Brielle, and Zanoni, every athlete, as a matter of fact, 
inside 200 meters to go here. That hand up, they'll have that hand up at the 100 meter mark. Guillaume Briand is off. Paulson is done. Jay Crouch finished up. Crouch on the far near floor looked to the left to see, okay, what's everybody else doing right now? They're resting. That's what they're doing because they had a row a tough thousand meters. 315 is no easy pace going into this high volume of thrusters. Every man in this heat onto the barbell now. They'll advance every 10 reps. Paulson and Crouch done first. Briault right behind them. Now, Uldis Utnik's made up some time on the barbell. And it's so wild to see with that fixed, forced pace as done to the pace of this event. Because normally, if it was just get off the rower as you please, they'd get off not too much slower, but a, big, a five second difference on a thousand meter row is a massive difference as far as the intensity of the row itself, and they'd be attacking these thrusters a bit more aggressively. But since they had to row much harder than you normally would if you were to attack this event, say you had your choice, just put an emphasis on how tough these thrusters are gonna be. Here are your leaders, Jake Crouch on the left, Tim Paulson on the right. Paulson 24th place overall coming into this event. Has two, two eighth place finishes so far in the competition. His best finishes here at the 2022 Noble Classic Games. Jake Crouch is 27th overall. Alex Vino advancing his barbell as well. Tim Paulson keeps overshooting the stopping point on his barbell. Tim Paulson got here out of the last chance qualifier. So he barely missed it in the semifinals at Granite Games. Qualified out of that online format that had a 2,000 meter row into a handstand walk, but the time frame also dictated the pace at which he had to go. Falls into his final set at 10. And then he'll move on to the 30 bar muscle ups. Paulson and Brion. And Vino. And Vino here, Jake Crouch. And Ula Zubik's in that fight as well. Crouch starting to gain some ground on Paulson. Is Paulson taking a break, so Jake Crouch it's going to be the first man done with his 50 thrusters. Now 30 bar muscle ups. They'll do 20 on one bar and then advance to the final red bar to, for the final 10 reps. Here comes Tim Paulson and Uldis Utbeeks. And the wild thing about finishing here at the bar muscle ups is that that can be a benchmark test by itself. And you're putting this at the end of the final event after the end of five long consecutive days of competition. Wildus Upnix is in the lead now as he has yet to take a break on this first set of bar muscle ups. He's through now 67 of the 90 scored repetitions. Upnix has 10 in the books. And he continues to work out through 12. And he will finally take a break through 14. Bar muscle, Vino sits in second. He's through 13. Real and Zanoni. Jake Crouch continuing to work. He is now through 10. Real Utnik's and now Paulson creeping up again as he's back to work. Check out Andre Uday. He's in lane number eight. Look how high he's catching.
catching at the top of that. Now, why is that beneficial? Well, you just did 50 thrusts at 95 pounds, which involved pressing from the shoulder, overhead, and completely blowing out your triceps. Normally, when you receive the top of that position, you're in a half dip position. How high he's receiving at the top of that is a, is a big strength for Uday. Now, he's just got to be able to take a little bit shorter breaks to see that low catch position in that press out. That is what got taxed during those thrusters. Here are your two leaders, Ulta Supniks and Guillaume Briand. Briand with four remaining. Briand now on his final rep, and he will take heat one. 8.52.79 seconds. Upnik says four left. And Alex Vigneault is catching up to him. And here comes Upnik. Vigneault takes a break. He's got one left. You're on to that last set. Crouch is in, and here comes Vigneault in just over two minutes. Tim Paulson is through, and he closes out his CrossFit games. Here's Enrico Zanoni, the first Italian man to qualify for the CrossFit games out of regionals or semifinals. 9.45.15 seconds, 10 seconds remain. Borat sneaking in, and Andre Uday is done. Guillaume Briand, 8.52.79 seconds. Uldis Upniks is second in the heat at 9.15.21. Guillaume Briand leaves the floor with the time to beat. It's Jay Crouch in third, followed by Vino, and the patron saint of full send, Tim Paulson. One heat down, two remain. Stay with us, everybody, here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. One heat down, two remain for the men here in the final event of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Mike Arsenault is down on the competition floor. Event number 13, Jackie Pro. Gonna beef it up a little bit. It's the CrossFit Games, as they say. We're gonna start with a thousand meter row, 50 thrusters at 95 pounds, and 30 bar muscle ups. But that starting row is dictated to you as it must be under three minutes and 15 seconds for the men. So be smart how you start. You just gotta be right underneath that. No reason to go faster than that. But at the end, whatever you got left, give it. 10 men in this. Second of three heats. And Noah Olsen is trying to finish inside the top 10 of the CrossFit Games for now the eighth time in his career. Noah Olsen, it's amazing to say that how long he has been competing in the sport. I almost still see him as that rookie in 2014 when he was trying to push Rich towards the finish in his final individual season. Noah Olsen taking the time to salute the crowd his ninth career appearance here at the CrossFit Games as an individual. He has only finished outside the top 10 
once, and that was in 2015. Start with the 1,000 meter row. Guillaume Briel, the top time, 8.52.79 seconds. As you said before, they must finish in three minutes and 15 seconds. That's a average of 137.5, 500 meter row pace. And that's not an easy row pace to do if you're just doing a 500 meter one off time trial, let alone double it or be functional enough to get off the rower and work your way down the floor with those 95 pound thrusters. But at the top, we're saying, be smart how you start. You don't have to be much faster than 315. And what we saw in heat one, everybody got right to that time limit and nobody raced to the barbell. And so what we're seeing is that this row is having a massive impact on how they approach the thrusters. So just get underneath, right underneath that cap of 315, and do it the easiest way possible as far as pacing is concerned. There is Noah Olson. His cheering section is here supporting him. Not only him, but also his dog Maximus. We're saying now that row pace is faster than most people would start, but probably not know that, like, hey, you gotta go 315. He's like, no problem, that was the plan anyways. Noah Olson has two career event wins. The handstand hold in 2020, the virtual portion of the CrossFit Games that year, and then Mary, the event in 2019, his first career event win. Certainly a memorable moment for Noah Olson during his career. See, Noah's time, his pacing is ticking between 36, 37, and 38. And it's a delicate balance on trying to keep that row pace. Again, 315 is a fast thousand to start an event. One rep for every 100 calories. And it's Spencer Panchik and Dallin Pepper who are slightly in front of the field here. There is Brent Mikowski. Mikowski, who finished on the podium last year. The judges' hands starting to go in the air for both Nick Matthew and Lazar Jukic, the two of them. Now with about 100 meters to go, just look at Matthew's monitor, he's inside 100. And it's tough to judge if you don't have the monitor display that says projected finish. So you're kind of going off on field, and you got to understand the very part of this, you didn't start at a 137 pace, you started at zero. So you got to row a bit faster over the course of that if you want to hit that time. Everybody paced that perfectly, 3.15 for just about all of them. So all the men now getting out of the rower and heading to the barbell. Lazar Jukic is going to be the first man to start. Cole Sager and Travis Mayer right behind him. And now Brent Fikowski is getting to work on his 50 thrusters at 95 pounds. And moving to a thruster off the rower, it's it's somewhat complementary movement pattern, somewhat redundant. You have that leg drive of the row and the pull on the handle, and here you have a leg drive of the squat and the press overhead. And it's really a, a really fun collection of movements, because as we go from here, we go to the pull-up bar where you have the bar muscle up. It's the most, most range of motion of any gymnastics movement from the rig as you can. So. A lot of ROM in this event. <laughs> Lazar Jukic, Cole Sager, and Travis Mayer, your top three, trying to chase down Guillaume Briant's time of 8.52.79 seconds. 10 minute time cap here. Lazar Jukic in 11th place overall. Jukic and Sager 
And Sager has a history with some events with thrusters, making a, a charge late in some of his heroics at regionals back in the day. Well, there's no knowledge they called the comeback kid for a reason. It's always sent around some type of thruster, a sandbag clean. And it's always been a tough finish. With a lot of athletes in this second heat that have we talk about the old guard of athletes, it's weird to put names like Sager, Mayer, Olsen in that category. Brent Fikowski with the likes of Jukic, Pepper, George, Pancex. Sager in the lead now, as he is done with his thrusters. And this is a weight belt. When do you think the last time that Cole Sager wore a weight belt for 95-pound thrusters? This shows how beat up these athletes have been over the past five days. It's been a brutal test in the most respective of ways to say it, and that's what it should be. If you're going to make a claim as bold as the fittest man, woman, and team on Earth, the test needs to refl reflect that claim. 90 scored repetitions here. Lazar Jukic is just a couple of reps ahead of Cole Sager. Travis Mayer and Noah Olsen are now under the pull-up bar along with Yona Koski, Dallin Pepper, and Willie George. Nick Matthews, the last man on his thrusters in the background on the box on the right. Cole Sager is just ripping off a big set. There are 20 reps on this first bar. See is the red bar on Luka Jukic. They'll finish with 10 at the end. Jukic with 10 to go, Sager with 10 to go. They'll move to the Final red pull-up bar, Jukic on the right side of your screen is to work first. 8.52.79, the time to beat. Jukic is reeling that in quickly. Seven, now six to go for Jukic. Sager back to work. Sager having to re-grip his hands at the top. And at this point, we said, whatever you have left, give it. It's over after this. Hang on for one more. Jukic. With five remaining, or make it three remaining, Sager has five remaining. And now Koski's on his final round. And Jukic is across. 759.70 seconds. Sager on his final rep. And Sager is done. His ninth appearance at the CrossFit Games. Here's Yonikoski as the leader on the floor. He's through 26 of those 30 bar muscle ups. Dallin Pepper a couple reps back of him, as is Noah Olson. Final rep for Koski. He is done. Olson looking to be the next man to cross the finish line, but Willie George is on his final two reps, and George is in. And here comes Noah Olson. 844.10 seconds right now, the fifth best time in the event. Dallin Pepper is across the finish line. He was on the right side of your screen. Fikowski, Mayer, who just came in. Now Spencer Panjic and Nick Matthew, all left on the floor. And the professor is in. Red Fikowski finishing up his 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Spencer Panchik is across, and Nick Matthew, who had some exciting moments here inside the Coliseum. Think back to the skill speed medley on the opening night when he figured out those double unders with a crossover and got the crowd on its feet. And then last night in the sandbag ladder, Probably not the last time we're going to see Nick Matthew at the CrossFit Games. Lazar Jukic has the top time heading into the third and final heat. 7.59.70 seconds. Going over to congratulate Noah Olson.
We are down to the final heat, and we will have it for you when we return to the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Thank you, Brent. One event from history. The final heat for the men here. And Justin Medeiros is poised to become just the third man to repeat as the fittest man on earth. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Mike Arsenault is down on the competition floor. Overall standings coming in, Justin Medeiros is 35 points clear of Roman Krennikov. Ricky Garrard sits in third. He is 30 points back of Krennikov for second. Final event, we're taking the CrossFit benchmark Jackie, and we're up in the difficulty and intensity. Heard this phrase before, this is the CrossFit Games. And with the caliber of athletes that we have here, it is only appropriate to spice this up a little bit more. It's not your average 1,000 meter row. It has to be under 315. It's 95 pound thrusters instead of 45. It's bar muscle ups instead of pull ups. But you have to be smart at the start. You have a fixed pace to row. There's no reason to go faster than that. And if you want to be the reigning, repeating fittest man on earth, you need to do whatever it takes and get whatever you have left to get that spot. Recipe for success presented by Trifecta. Here is your start list. Justin Medeiros trying to become just the third man to repeat as CrossFit Games champion. He will be in lane five. Ricky Garrard and Roman Krennikov trying to figure out where they're going to wind up on the podium. Medeiros needs to finish ninth or better to be crowned the fittest man on earth for the second straight time. And if it's anything like last year, it was a much closer race. And what did Justin Medeiros do? He went out and he won the whole thing. It was also his first and only win of the weekend. And Justin's still waiting for one of those. You start with the 1,000 meter row. You have to complete it inside three minutes and 15 seconds. Every single athlete that has done this has finished right on time. When I look at Roman Karenikov on the right, these athletes need an average of 137 pace, but Roman Kurenikov has the fastest 1,000 meter row time trial of the group at a 2.48, which is insane. Now, what does that mean? It doesn't necessarily mean he needs to row fast, faster than everyone, but it means a 3.15 for Roman might be the easiest 1,000 against everyone, and that's a big point of contention when we're going into the thrusters coming up after this. There is Ricky Garrard making his first appearance in the CrossFit game since 2017. Right now sits in third place. There are 10 reps in this row. The athletes will get a rep for every 100 meters they complete. The number in the white box next to the man's name in red will indicate how many reps that man has completed. The number in the white box next to everyone else's name will indicate how far behind they are of the leaders. So Saxon Panchik in front here on this 1,000 meter row on the back half. And other athletes that are fighting for positioning, you see Roman sitting at a 135, 136, right underneath the pace you need. You need it to be at a 137 or faster. But look how relaxed he is, how comfortable it is. It's kind of nice when they say, hey, listen, you only need to go 30 seconds slower than your fastest 1,000 meter time you've ever done. 
That's great for Roman because most of these athletes, after five full days of competition, the first time we've ever had five consecutive days of competition at the CrossFit Games is everybody's feeling it. Everybody's tired. You're testing a lot of want to out there. Roman has been wanting to be here for five years. And now he has an opportunity not only to hold on to second, but possibly fight for a first place position. Saxon Panzik is your leader. Last year, the CrossFit Games, a career best fifth place finish. This year, he currently sits in ninth coming into this final event. There's your overall leader. His judge's hand is in the air, meaning that he is on his final 100 meters. There is the barbell that awaits 95 pounds, and they have to perform 50 thrusters at that weight. Now, the big sign of who's feeling good is how quick they transition from the rower to the barbell. As we've seen, every two, the last two heats, every athlete finished right under 315 and take their time to the bar. And Her there Pernikoff. it is. Pernikoff. Pernikoff, Quant, Gerard, and Adler moving to the barbell. Here comes Justin Medeiros. Medeiros just has to hang close to Krennikov and Gerard. Jason Hopper in lane two is actually first to start it off. But as you said, they'll all start at the same time, advancing every 10 reps. <laughs> 50 thrusters here at the 60 rep mark is when they will be done with this portion of the event. Sam Quan is now your leader through 20 of the 90 scored repetitions in this event. He and Jason Hopper lead here. Hopper's at the top of your screen in the all black. Juan is in the black shorts, no shirt in the middle of your screen. Jason Hopper up at the top in lane two in all black is no stranger to machine work and heavy thrusters. Last October at the Rogue Invitational, he won the event that had Echo Bike Cows and a big sprint to the finish on the barbell. The thing that we that Roman needs is these guys are great, but he's on the wrong side of them. If he wants a chance to take down Justin, he has to get ahead of him. There's help out there available, but you have to take advantage of it when it's out there for you. Jason Hopper is through now 30 of those 50 thrusters. He and Quan advance the barbell along with Pat Veller and Roman Krennikov just slightly ahead of Medeiros. Medeiros ahead of Ricky Garrard. Garrard in the black shorts, no shirt, towards the upper right-hand part of your screen, just dropped the barbell. And Justin Medeiros is starting to pick up the pace on these thrusters. Look how close it is in the top part of your screen is what rep they're on and how far behind. Everyone within one or two reps of each other. Velder wants. Krennikov and Medeiros moving the barbell at the same, same time. Here come Adler and Hopper towards the top of your screen. Medeiros in the white jersey in the middle of the screen, trying to wrap up the title of fittest on earth for the second straight year. Five reps to go on the thrusters for Medeiros. He is now your leader in the heat. And the crowd rises as Justin Medeiros and Roman Krennikov move to the pull-up bar along with Jason Hopper. There is the Medeiros family, his father and his mother, front row, waiting for their son to cross the finish line. Thirty reps here on the bar muscle-ups. They'll do twenty on the first bar, they will move to that red bar and complete their final 10. Roman Krennikov is in the lead right now, but not enough distance between him and Medeiros at this moment for Krennikov to erase that 35-point deficit. And finishing on the pull-up bar, last year there was 90 chest-to-bar pull-ups in the final, and that's where Justin made his move. This guy can hang on to a pull-up bar. I know it's bar muscle-ups, but Medeiros has the stamina to hang with anybody on the rig. 
Predikoff knocked out a set of 15 before he took a break. Now Medeiros is back to work. He went through 12. Predikoff with a two rep lead over Medeiros now. Medeiros is inching closer. Medeiros is through 17 of the 30. Predikoff is through 19. And there are Justin's parents. Prenikov. They have forgotten to advance. Uh, he has. Karenikov only has five reps. He needed to advance to the red pull-up bar, but it's also on the judge to move him there. Medeiros now has seven left. He's going to take a break. Predikov with one remaining. He'll come across and it was worth the wait for Roman. And now Justin Medeiros. Taking a break, he's got one left. Why does that guy have a mullet? Because he doesn't want his hair getting in his eyes when he's kicking your butt for the second straight time. Justin Medeiros is the fittest man on earth. Saxon Pancic taking a break. We've also got Quant Adler and Gumanson across the finish line. And there is Ricky Garrard. Who is looking like he's going to finish on the podium. So a triumphant return to competition for Ricky Garrard. that we are done and for the second straight time the crown of fittest man on earth rests on the head of Justin Medeiros Lazar Jukic is going to hang on for the win Roman Krenikov will take Second in the event, and looking like he's going to wind up with a silver medal. Cole Sager in third, and now the two-time fittest man on earth, Justin Medeiros in fourth. So Ricky Garrard coming in third in this, able to finish, close out, a third place position, but Roman Karenikov, welcome to the CrossFit Games. It's been a long time coming. He's earned it four times previously, his first time to get here, but just Medeiros, back to back. But look at this. I hope this is a sight we get to see for years to come with Roman, Ricky, and Justin. What a weekend. Roman Karenikov has waited a long time for this moment. And he has been in the United States so long that he missed the birth of his son and just got to meet him for the first time getting here to Madison. Let's go down to the competition floor.
It is time to officially crown the fittest man on earth, and for that, here's CrossFit's competition director, Adrian Bosman. Ladies and gentlemen, your reigning, defending, fittest man on earth, Justin Medeiros. Final event, climb the wall to hug your family. Man. <laughs> Hits differently as a dad. What a weekend. What a champion. What great hands the future of the sport is in. Justin, what an incredible performance, a model of consistency. Every single finish inside the top 20, and you finish the week with five consecutive top five finishes. Why do you get stronger the deeper we go in competition? Man, that's what I love for. I mean, the competition weekend is uh, at the CrossFit Games. We have 15 events. I mean, obviously it's fitness, but who can recover and uh, keep performing at their peak performance no matter what comes up. So that's what we train for. Last year, you were chasing the title. This year, you defended it. How do the two experiences compare? Man, they're, they're two totally different experiences. I can't explain how different they are, but man, this year, I mean, every competition we do, I mean, me and my team, Adam, Jesse, my whole family, I mean, we always go out and we're gonna die for points. You never know when you're gonna need three, four, five, six points. So throughout the whole weekend, you never know when you're gonna need it. So die for points, whether if you're trying to get from 20th to 19th or first to second, so. Justin, congratulations. That's two championships in a row. The third man to accomplish that feat. We'll see you here next year. Once again, congratulations. Awesome, appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Woo! <laughs> Justin Medeiros has won the title of fittest man on earth twice, and in those two campaigns, he's won one event. And it's a model of consistency. That's the game we play. And as the field advances in ability, the days of winning multiple events may be gone because of how good the field is becoming. And so it's about consistency. And Jess Medeiros is exactly that. Final standings. In his first in-person appearance at the CrossFit Games, Roman Krennikov will finish in second. Ricky Garrard is on the podium, and how about Sam Quant, who was second back in 2020, missed out on last year, and here he is again inside the top five. Jeff Adler and Pat Velder. The future of the sport is in good hands. Justin Medeiros for the second straight year is the fittest man on earth. Coming up next, the women take on event 13 here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games.
We have crowned the fittest man on earth. Now we are getting set to crown the fittest woman on earth. Welcome inside the Coliseum on the campus of the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, as we close out the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Thanks for being with us, everyone. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Chase Ingram and the Sticky Brazier down on the competition floor. And for the first time since 2014, we close out with a benchmark that has been amped up. Amped up with these professional crossfitters. And we caught Jackie Pro, 1,000 meter row, 50 thrusters at 65 pounds, 30 bar muscle ups to close out the 2022 CrossFit Games. Be smart how you start. You have to finish under 340 on this 1,000 meter row. And as we saw at the end, give whatever you got left, because after this, it's break time. 10 women in this first of three heats. Turi Helgadotter in lane five is often the forgotten Icelandic athlete, but she debuted at the CrossFit Games in 2012. She did, and I remember it vividly because I would butcher her name more than I do most names <laughs> out here on the competition floor. But Turi is a very, very underrated and underappreciated athlete in total, and definitely one of the daughters we should hold up there in as high regard yeah. as anybody else. We start with that 1,000 meter row, and just like the men, you have to get in inside a certain number. That number, three minutes and 40 seconds for the women in order to advance to the barbell, and it wasn't a problem for any of the men. It shouldn't be a problem for any of these athletes. You have the average just under a 150 pace. 150 will get you there, but if you're one second off, that clock is going to exactly show what the time is, because it is counting down from 1,000. So making sure that monitor reads something 140 without cutting it too close. One rep for every 100 meters completed. Curry pulling it about a 150 pace. And that pace is, is that's your average 500 meter row pace. It's basically your speedometer on the concept to rower. If you double that, that's right at the pace you need to be to be a 340. It's a 150 per 500 you have to hold to make that time cap. There's Alex Gazan making her first appearance here at the CrossFit Games. And this twist provides a unique element to this, because it's not often you see people rowing the opening thousand at a pace that's uncomfortable. What Gazan is doing is that she's trying, she's doing a great job of staying relaxed. And that's what you need for this first thousand. However, you can't stay too relaxed, as you might miss that time cap. But that's what we're saying is being smart at the start. There's no bonus points for getting faster than the 340. We saw it from the men, as they rode it right to that line, and they all got off the rower at the same time. Look at Bailey Rail. Rail in her second individual appearance at the CrossFit Games. She has competed here before on a team starting in 2017 and again in 2018 with CrossFit 417. She was 18th in 2021. Sung Yeon Choi, Carolyn Prevo, Paige Powers, Yusa Lake, Sayer Kaya, all on the lead pace. As There's a packed house here at the Alliant Energy Center is we get set to crown the fittest woman on earth. Sayer Kaya. Another one of the rookies we have in the field here. The judges' hands starting to go in the air here. As all the athletes are inside their final 100 meters. And there is Turi Helgadotter who has gotten through this. 340 is when they all have to be done. 340 is not a slow row by any stretch.
three seconds to go before we hit that. Some of these athletes are having to basically do a time trial effort just to get underneath that, and it looks like Helga Daughter and Fuslier did not hit the mark. Turi Helga Daughter was pulling for all she was worth and just could not get in, and neither could Rebecca Fuselay. Kara Freyova, who is in the lead now, the athletes will advance that 65-pound barbell every 10 reps. 50 reps I need to complete here. Top three are on the screen, Freyova, Gazan, and Christine Kohlenbrand are on the far right. Past the five minute mark, an 11 minute time gap for the women. It was 10 minutes for the men. The cement has to do with the distance on the row. What I like that they have at the end of this set, they're keeping the volume of the bar muslims. And that's out of respect and necessity of how good these athletes have come over the last few years. Traditionally in the past, you'd probably see something like a 30 and 20 or a 30 and 25. But what we've seen this weekend is a lot of even numbers between the men and the women. And they're stepping up and delivering. Brayova back to work. She's through 30 of these 50 reps. Cole and Brander Gazan are there with her. There's Turi Helgadotter, who along with Rebecca Fusile did not complete that 1,000 meter row inside the three minute 40 cap. Rayova through 40 reps. Colin Brander's done. Paige Powers and Carolyn Prevo are moving up as well. Now, a lot of times when you combine thrusters with any type of gymnastics pull, obviously there's some, there's some Fran elements when it comes to that, a little squat push and a pull on the ring. What you'll tell your athletes is put a lot into the legs. Put as much into your legs as you can. The problem is they had to row so hard, it's a lot easier than said than done. Freyova back in the lead, but just barely as Paige Powers. On the far end of the floor, she's in the green shorts on the left side of your screen. It's starting to creep up. Freyova, Colin Brander, Prevo, Powers, and Gazan all done. Now they'll start their 30 bar muscle ups, 20 on the first bar, and then a final 10 on the red bar. Freyova catching right above 90 at the top of that dip. And if you can get a little higher, the massive benefit after everything that they've gone through so far, those 50 thrusters are going to take a lot out of that press out at the top. So if you can catch higher, see on the right side of your screen, Colin Brander is doing just that. Rayova in the lead, she's through 11 of those 30. Powers and Prevo sit in second place. Freyova back to work as Powers was creeping up on her. Freyova back in the lead here by three reps over Paige. Alice Gazan, Colin Brander, and Prevo in the top five right now as we are in the final stages of this opening heat of the 13th and final event for the women. Karin Freyova, 22nd place overall. Her 
third individual appearance at the CrossFit Games. Took 14th in 2020. Does have a games event win under her belt in 2020. But the virtual portion of the CrossFit Games that year, she won the 1,000 meter row. Talked about that with Roman Karenikov in the final of the men's heat is that if you can pace that row perfectly, it's massively beneficial to the rest of your event coming into the thrusters where we saw a lot of athletes in this heat. That was a massive part of this event, almost near max effort to get underneath that time frame of 340. Final rep for Cara Freova, and she is across. Nine minutes, 31.77 seconds. Paige Powers are gonna wrap up second place. She's got three reps left. Carolyn Crevo has four. Gazan now has five remaining. Final rep for Powers. Nine fifty-five point three four for Powers. Carolyn Prevo looks to be the next woman across the finish line. She's a couple reps ahead of Christine Kohlenbrander. And there goes Prevo. And Alex Gazan is done. There goes Christine Kohlenbrander who's through. Thirty seconds to go before we hit the eleven-minute time cap. There's Sung Young Choi, who is through. Sayer Kaya has one rep remaining. Kaya's across the finish line. A Bailey Rail looks like she's going to come up short. Karen Freyova, 9.31.77 seconds, the top time with two heats remaining. Two rookies inside the top five as Paige Powers and Alex Gazan get across the finish line, and then it's Prevo and Colin Brand are the other two athletes in the top five in heat number one. Two more heats remain here of the final event for the women. Stay with us, everybody. 2022 Noble CrossFit Games continue. Individual competition at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games inches closer to a conclusion. Just two heats remain for the women here inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. And for the first time in a long time, we close out with a spin on a CrossFit benchmark. But it's, this is event 13. It was in 2013 when Jackie first got unveiled on the competition scene at regionals. Same rep scheme, but different movements. 1,000 meter row with a time check. Thrusters with weight, 65 pounds for the women. And chin over bar pull-ups have now been leveled up to bar muscle-ups. Be smart how you start. You must row faster than a 340. Beyond that, just try to get there as easy as you can. And as we get to the end, whatever you have left, give it. There's nothing, no more surprises after this. 10 women in the second of 
three heats, and it's Haley Adams in lane five who fell out of the top 10 in that last event, now 11th overall. Haley Adams wore the leader jersey for a day, and she's had a tough four events, 21st, 32nd, 23rd, 26th. But this is her opportunity to not just get inside the top 10, but Sean, she's only 17 points out of seventh place, which is Ariel Lowen. Start with a 1,000 meter row in three minutes and 40 seconds. That is when they need to be done with the entirety of the work here on the rower. They will receive one rep for every 100 meters that they complete. There are 90 total scored repetitions in the event. In a view of the intensity these athletes are having to row at to make sure they get underneath that 340 time. That is a fast time for these athletes. Need to average below a 150 pace. Haley Adams sitting at 147. That's her average 500 meter row pace. So she can hold that, she'll be just fine. The challenge is, is that balance of pushing the pace a little bit too hard for fear of the time cap and maybe blowing up before you get to the thruster. So you gotta make sure you can dial that in as close to the cut line time as possible. There's Amanda Barnhart. We only saw two women in heat number one not be able to get in inside that three minute 40 cap. And when you think about that, Sean, is on the men's side, we had none. And so to see that maybe for the first time starts the nerves up again. You think, it's like, okay, the time cap's good. They've all made it. And then when you see the first one go, you're like, oh, this might be a faster pace or a tougher time to get than I'd planned. Danny Spiegel, who's had a great day so far. I really had a marquee performance on Saturday night in the sandbag ladder. 148 for Spiegel, flirting with 149. You don't know exactly what your time is gonna be. You can only guess based off what your average row pace, but that's exactly what it is. It's an average. It's not an exact, because when you start the rower, those first five pulls, you see three minutes, 240, 220, two minutes before you even get there. That time does accumulate in the beginning, so you can't just sit at a 150 from the start. You have to dip below about 48 if you wanna be comfortable getting underneath that 340 time. As you see O'Connell, I mean, that's a near max effort just to get off the rower, let alone do thrusters afterwards. Rowing at a 148 pace, we talk a lot about youth in this competition. Chrissy Arab O'Connell is the oldest woman in the field at 33 years old, making her sixth individual appearance at the CrossFit Games. Three forty hits. It looks like every woman did get through, and now they will move to the barbell. Sixty-five pounds, fifty thrusters. Ellie Turner gets right to work along with Lucy Campbell, Danny Spiegel, Haley Adams, and Amanda Barnhart on the barbell. Ellie Turner at the top of your screen in the gray pants is ripping through these. We saw what Elliot Turner did with the wall ball shots yesterday in Patrick. Now it's a 14 pound ball, it was to an 11 foot target. And the rebound power that she has at the bottom of the squat, really not matched by any, that spring load at the bottom. See, another athlete will just kind of squat to depth, hope that they get it and then stand up all the way. Turner is just bouncing right out of the bottom of that squat. She's now through 
20 of those 50 thrusters. Turner's in the lead. Lucy Campbell and Haley Adams right behind her. Campbell's at the bottom in the black pants and Haley Adams in the middle. 90 total score repetitions here. Lucy Campbell, who won rinse and repeat on Saturday morning to kick off her weekend. Turner having a great set of thrusters. She also had the fastest row in the field at 338.1. There's Haley Adams, who, as you heard Chase say, is close to getting inside the top seven. Which is wild to think she's in 11. Seventh place is only 17 points away, and this is a decent event for Haley Adams. She's had a tough four events in a row, everything being outside the top 20, one outside the top 30. And he was wearing the leader jersey after day one of competition. Turner, Adams, and Campbell all in the lead. Danny Spiegel now sits in fourth, followed by Amanda Barnhart. At the 60 rep mark, they will move on to the pull-ups, the pull-up bars, and do these 30 bar muscle-ups. Now, speak for Haley is... She's always been right around top six, top five, top 10. And I'll speak volumes. If she can get back up into that, the tough part is that the next heat gets to see exactly what she's doing. Campbell, Adams, and Turner all to their bar muscle ups at the same time. It's going to be Lucy Campbell on the far right who starts first. They'll do 20 on that black pull up bar, then they'll move forward and complete their final 10 on the red. Excels in high intensity events, work capacity, high volume gymnastics. She is through 12 of her 30 and in the lead, but now Lucy Campbell has caught her. Ellie Turner falling off the lead pace. She's only through eight. Now Jacqueline Dahlstrom is on to the bar muscle up as well. And Danny Spiegel's getting started. Campbell now in front, she's through now 19 of the 30. Adams three reps back. That's Ellie Turner in third. And Campbell has now moved to the red pull-up bar for her final 10. She is on the right side of your screen, now middle. Tara Brayova has the top time at 931. 0.77 seconds, and Campbell has five reps to go. It's getting close. Gotta hang on. Campbell is through, and Lucy Campbell with a new top time. 829.53 seconds. Haley Adams is four reps away from finishing up. We're saying, if you got anything left, give it. Those last three reps, as far as confidence in getting them, all looked like a little maybe every time she threw herself up there, but she was able to hang on. Adams with the final rep, and now she is across, and Haley Adams has the second best time in the event right now at 8.56.87 seconds. Jacqueline Dalsham with five reps to go. Ellie Turner has seven remaining. Jacqueline Dahlstrom. 
9.29.65 seconds, third place in the heat and third place in the event. Minute time cap in the event, and Turner is now one rep away. It just can't get through it. Matilda Garns continues to work. Garns is now on her final rep. And there goes Turner. Garns across as well. And now Danny Spiegel is through. Three women remain, O'Connell, Semenza, and Barnhart. And we have now 30 seconds to go before we hit the 11 minute time cap. Christy O'Connell finishing up. Three reps for both Semenza and Barnhart remain. Barnhart's gonna take a break. And Semenza gets through. Final 10 seconds, Barnhart, that's her last rep, and she is done. So every woman in heat number two gets in inside the 11 minute time cap, and we have one heat to go. Thank you, Brent. And it's going to be a coronation for the greatest of all time. Tia Toomey on the precipice of becoming the sixth time fittest woman on earth here inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. Overall standings, Tia Toomey has a 141-point lead on Mal O'Brien. Laura Horvath is now inside the top three and will have to hold off Danielle Brandon and Brooke Wells. But there is Tia Toomey, soon to be six-time fittest woman on earth. Event 13, it's a classic CrossFit benchmark that we all do in the gym, but for these athletes, we've amped it up. We've amped it up in a big way. 1,000 meter row, but you must finish under three minutes and 40 seconds. 50 thrusters at 65 pounds and 30 bar muscle-ups. The time is fixed. You need to play it smart at the beginning. There's no bonus points for finishing faster, but you are cut from the competition here in the final event and not allowed to advance if you are slower. And in the end, it's gonna come down to some tight races outside of first. Whatever you have left at the end, you're gonna need to give it. Still plenty on the line here. Laura Horvath in lane four, trying to hold off Danielle Brandon in lane seven and Brooke Wells in lane number three. Laura Horvath, a day ago, was in 15th place, has one back-to-back -back events to get herself all the way up into third. Now, Danielle Brandon is in fourth. She's over 30 points out. Another athlete to look for is going to be Brooke Wells. Brooke Wells, who's sitting in lane number three, who last year had to be carried off the competition floor with a devastating elbow injury in the middle of the competition who was poised for one of her best finishes in her career. 
in fifth place overall. She's tied for her best finish after recovering from that. And she is just a handful of points behind Danielle Brandon for possibly having the greatest finish of her CrossFit career. Incredible comeback for Brooke Wells. One rep will be given for every 100 meters that these athletes complete. The number in the white box next to the woman's name in red will indicate how many repetitions that woman has completed. The number in the white box next to everybody else will either indicate if they are tied or how far behind they are of the leader. There are 90 total scored repetitions in this event. Tiatumi pulling at about a 147 pace. That's all she needs to be doing. You gotta stay under 150 if you wanna get underneath the 340 mark. That pace you see is basically the speedometer for this concept to skier. You have to average a 150, 500 meter row pace. So if you double it, that's your 340 time. What we've seen so far, as this time matters significantly for the women's competition. We've seen athletes already get capped at this point, so there is no room to take off if they wanna get through this. On the flip side, you can't put yourself in too big of a hole that you can't even finish the event. But when you look at machines and front work, and what we've seen from Laura Horvath over the extent of her career, is that it shapes up very well for her to possibly hold on to that third place, place position. But Emma Lawson, we haven't talked about her. She's 17. She also wore the leader jersey at one point in time in this competition. This is her rookie debut as an individual. She still has an opportunity to get a top five finish as well. Emma Lawson continuing to work on her 1,000 meter row, Laura Horvath is slightly ahead of everyone else. How, 700 meters and counting here. The question is how easy can you make a 340,000 meter row? The answer is not easy for us humans. But as we said before, these are the fittest athletes in the world. Your top 10 after 12 events. Laura Horvath, 150 is the pace. But what she's done up to this point at a 125 left to go, she should be right underneath the time that she needs to get. Everyone inside their final 100 meters here, and then they will move to the 65 pound barbell and complete 50 thrusters advancing down the floor after every 10 repetitions. There is Tia Toomey's family. They are here together for the first time to watch her compete. Her husband and coach Shane Orr is the man in the black hair. He's Second in from the camera. And now Laura Horvath, Mal O'Brien, and Daniel Brandon, along with Tia Toomey, moving to the barbell. Laura Horvath getting right to work. She is not going to give anyone a chance to take away a podium finish from her. Laura Horvath is the first athlete, male or female, to finish under the cap and walk straight to the bar and pick it up. 50 reps they need to complete here at the 60 rep mark is when they will start the bar muscle ups. And Laura Horvath has already threw her first 10, as is. Mal O'Brien. Mal O'Brien in second overall. Clear by about 60 points from Laura Horvath. But Horvath has done so much work to get here. We said she won the opening two events today. She got third last night in the sandbag clean. She has had to make up an almost insurmountable amount of points in a matter of three events with one more to go. Laura Horvath is now through 25. She is halfway through the set of 50 here that she needs to complete. And here comes Tia Toomey. Mal O'Brien in the gray top and black shorts is looking to become the youngest woman to ever finish on the podium at the CrossFit Games, and Tia Toomey taking some time to just soak this moment in. As she works through these 50 thrusters. Laura Horvath continues to lead. She is through 40 of the 50 reps. 
to explain the dominance we've seen by Tia Tumi. She could have just stayed on the rower and not even started the event, and she still would have won it. And that is something we have gotten used to here at the CrossFit Games. Tumi often having the championship wrapped up before she even takes the floor for the final event. Laurel Horvath on the left side of your screen in the all black has now one rep remaining. So Horvath is through and she is dominating here on Sunday. Horvath to the 30 bar muscle ups. To me into her final set of 10 thrusters. A 29.53 is the time to beat belongs to Lucy Campbell. Horvath is through five of those 30 bar muscle ups. Here goes Tia Tumi on her final set of 10. Horvath continues to work. She's through 10 of the 30 and she's not taking a break. But now she finally does after 11. They have to do 20 bar muscle-ups on the gray bars. They can choose either which one they want. One's a little bit shorter than the other. They'll finish on the red bar for their final set of 10. Here comes Tia Toomey to the rig. Laura Horvath, though, is now through 12 and counting. Looking to finish on the podium for the third time in her career. Horvath is... Rated when it comes to high volume pulling gymnastics. That background in rock climbing, her grip strength and arm pulling stamina is some of the top in the field. Tia Tumi is through seven reps and she's taking a break. Think that she got nine done. Horvath is 10 away from possibly winning this event. She's got to hurry. Mal O'Brien's creeping up as well as Cara Saunders. Horvath back on the pull-up bar for her final 10 reps. It looks like Lucy Campbell has a shot here of picking up her second event win of the competition. She put up that time in heat number two. Oh, Horvath is, oh, she's gonna take a break. I was wondering if she's gonna go three for three here. Kara Saunders and Mal O'Brien now are catching her, and Saunders has moved into the lead in the heat. Kara Saunders is through, so she will take the heat. The Laura Horvath continues to work. Horvath, what a charge on Sunday, and she may wind up on the podium. Tia Toomey has 10 reps remaining. She's on to the pull-up bar for the final time as Mal O'Brien is across, and she can wind up in second place overall. And here goes Tia Toomey. Final set of 10. Now, it has been said that behind every great man is a greater woman. But now, there are two great men behind the greatest woman. Tia Toomey as her family looks on. Getting back to work. Move over Mac. Step aside Rich. For the sixth time. And for the final time, Tia Toomey is the fittest woman on earth. If you're wondering why Tia Toomey took her time and soaked it in, this is it. She is planning to retire after the CrossFit Games.
Australian athletes to ever take the competition for at the CrossFit Games is Scotty Saunders, Tara's daughter. Tia, six times, it has never been done before, and the look on your face during those last few reps seemed like you were really soaking it in. What is going through your mind at this moment? <laughs> um, well, that was an interesting week. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I dedicate so much of my time to this sport, and uh, just to be able to showcase my hard work, what my team and I have been able to do all the season long, even years before this season, to stand out in front of such an incredible community and crowd. And yeah. <laughs> and to really take advantage of what the CrossFit Games, what CrossFit as a sport, has to offer for us and really showcase what, you know, us athletes can are really capable of, both men, women, all the age group uh, divisions, teams, and the adaptive, you know, we are all pretty incredible and so it's just so awesome. After a finish like that, we have to know, do you come back one more time or is this the end? That's the question. <laughs> we'll see. Congratulations, Tia, incredible job. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And now. Here's the Champions Ball for your top 10. Champion in every sense of the word. And embracing Brooke Wells, who what a comeback for her. The rain started in 2017. And it lasts six years through 2022 as Laura Horvath and 18-year-old Mal O'Brien will join Tia Toomey on the podium. We will crown the fittest affiliate 
coming up here in a little bit. Stay with us, everybody. You can head to games.crossfit.com for official results, standings, and more. Tia Toomey, the six-time fittest woman on earth.
Are you nervous? Time to crown a champion in the team competition. The Affiliate Cup is up for grabs. The 2022 Noble CrossFit Games inside the Veterans Memorial Coliseum here at the Alliant Energy Center. Jamie Hagia is our reporter down on the floor. Jeremy Austin, the 2009 CrossFit Games champion. Tanya Wagner, my name is Joel Godet. Coming into this, everyone expected one team to be at the top of the leaderboard. Rich Froning looking for his 10th all-time championship between team and individual competition, and his CrossFit Mayhem Freedom is in the driver's seat. Sizable lead over Oslo Navy Blue, looking to repeat as the runners up from a year ago. CrossFit Invictus looking for their third podium in affiliate history, and their first since 2019. Our description of the final event, it's Echo Worm, and it's brought to us by Game Day Ready. Echo Worm for time. 50 and 75 calories on at the Echo Bike, 50 for the ladies, 75 for the men, and then onto the worm, which we haven't seen too much of. 30 worm squats, followed by clean and jerks, followed by thrusters, then into 10, 20 synchronized bar muscle ups in conga line fashion with all four team members and a 14 minute cap for their final event. And the recipe here for success is going to be worm communication. It's the first time we're really seeing that worm come into play where it's going to matter for the event. And it's going to get loud in here. And also, conga line plan, send your fastest first and last when they're the only ones on that bar. Ten events in the books. This is the 11th and final. We have two heats for it. We cut the field down after yesterday, just 20 teams. 10 in this opening heat. Nordic is a returner from last year. CrossFit Tyrannus back after they had a ticket to the games, lost to COVID in 2020. Urban Energy finished seventh last year. They are in lane seven for this heat. Our guaranteed rate teams to watch. We talked about Tyrannus. This was a big deal for them to come back after they felt they had basically a pandemic steal a game's appearance from them a couple years ago. Very consistent over the course of the 10 events that you mentioned, Joel. Two sixth place finishes, a fourth and an eighth, and fully deserve their spot inside this top 20. Also looking at OBA, talk about resurrected careers. Joey Tortora, who had walked away from the sport of CrossFit mid-event during the Open back in 2020. He has the black beard in the back. Kelsey Keel, back after a bobsledding trial. Chance for them to reignite that fire. And in contrast to Tyrannus, this is a rookie team here. They had a couple tough events, but for their first time here, four out of top, four top 10 finishes out of all the events, not bad for them. So now it's just bragging rights. Can they crack into the top 10? 14 minutes or less left of work for these teams. It is on to the Echo Bike. Each team has two bikes, one for the men, one for the women, 50 and 75 cows. However you'd like to split that up, transitions up to you. Being their last event of the competition here at the CrossFit Games, I'd be going out fairly heavy on this straight away, knowing that you've got someone who can step straight in. And whoever you're going to suffer more, if you can say suffer, on that worm, get them going first, make sure they've got enough recovery time, then your partner can come in and take over. I agree, Jeremy, and that's it. You, there's a temptation here, though, to go too hard, but because they can switch and they can share the workload, just kind of manage your heart rate, kind of manage what that is, and don't go too far in the tank because you have a lot of work ahead of you, but you can push that first person a little bit more. Absolutely, and I think for these teams from the 11 to 20 mark for our first heat, they will be pushing for a spot in that top 10, so it's just not all cruise control for this last event. They want to really get after it. A 
minute in here, you've seen a handful of transitions. How many transitions are we talking about? Is it basically splitting it in half or you're breaking it up more? I think it's going to depend on your capabilities on the Echo Bike. If you're someone like Khan Porter, who is really efficient and really powerful on a bike such as the Echo, they'd be looking at one change only, but it's going to depend on your capabilities. So if you're getting on and off, it's going to be fairly quick anyway, so transition time is going to be cut down. Game Day Ready is an official sponsor of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Scan that QR code on your screen or visit trykono.com. That's trykono.com today. Game Day Ready. And similar to other team events, really this one, of, it all depends on your male and female pairs because it's about timing this that you're done at the same time. So transition just so that you can keep up with each other is what's most important. Hand in the air signifies five calories remaining on the bike. One cow left for Ashley Wozny, and here comes OBA. Open Box Athletics, the former CrossFit supercharged in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They're going to work with Milford, who just got in over the cut last night. They were the 20th of 20 teams to advance their bottom of screen. This is the part now in this event where things can get hairy. They've all worked with the worm. They've had an opportunity to practice with this for a long time, and they get a chance to shine right here. There's a lot of temptation to hold on to that. We'll see which teams do and which team break strategically. 30 worm squats to open this up, then advance onto 30 worm clean and jerks, and then advance onto 30 worm thrusters, all broken up into sets of 10 as you march down the floor. Tony Ficini from Milford, very great, a very good strategy on that first set of worm thrusters. He was at about a 45 degree angle and he was able to communicate well with his team, although they must be in sequential file or Indian file, if you like. He had this massive 45 degree turn and he's got that head turning now, but he had the whole body in a position where he could communicate really well with all of his other team members. Do you put the communicator in front, in back? Who does the talking when you set up the worm? I think it's going to depend on how loud the arena is. A lot of people in the Alliant Energy Center right now in the Coliseum, but whoever's got the loudest voice, probably. Or you send, or the first person, because that's the visual with the hand. Just depends what you worked on, what works best for your team. But the biggest thing is just keeping this worm together and moving as a unit. The athletes that are in similar height have the best advantage to this. That's Nordic on the left side of your screen. Milford on the right side of your screen. Opposite ends of the floor. Leading the way here on the 30 worm clean end jerks. Second time we've seen the worm in competition and only inside the Coliseum this week. It was a hold earlier this week. They had to hold it, and only two athletes could hold it at a time. They were burping over it, so it wasn't doing the movements here. Like we've seen, some games have been really heavily programmed with the Worm. Worm has been around forever. Well, back when it was a six-person team, so not from it, we're no, nothing here that these athletes can't do. That Worm has a 100-pound section in the front, 70-pound section. 100 pound section, 70 pound section, and then of course in between the red lines, you've got six pound spacer sections. All of that weight carried on the shoulders of these athletes for 90 reps total down the floor. Interestingly, Emma Ferreira from Milford, second athlete in, is doing the calling for the clean and jerks. So I'm not sure what the strategy is there, but Tony Ficini at the front took the reins from the squats. Maybe they're just moving it down the chain a little. Emma Ferreira. And now she'll switch going to the back of the pack. And we're seeing some of these transitions here because once these athletes get to the thrusters, they cannot make any changes to the order of their team. And that order will remain then when they move to the bar muscle ups. And those bar muscle ups are synchronized, working in pairs. Order does matter who you're used to, who you work out next to in training sessions. And it usually depends on what movement they're doing as to who is in what position. So obviously you're going to send your fastest. Now there's a first little slip up with the worm. Got to make sure when you drop the worm, you drop it cleanly. Don't give yourself any extra work trying to get it back in order. OBA center of screen.
OBA still leading the way. Entering in 11th place. If you can come in with a top 10 finish, that's a good year here in 2021. You've got to think with 90 movements with the worm, you're going to be able to control that heart rate. So they're going to spike it early with that echo bike calorie coming in, getting into a nice, easy rhythm, because you can't go any faster than your slowest person. And 90 reps is going to take the majority of this time cap. Then they're going to spike it again once they do get to the bar muscle ups. With it being the final event, just so much excitement, so much push. It's There's nothing like the last event of competition as a competitor. You have given it your all. It's not just about this day. It's about the entire week. It's about the entire year, all the training. And you just want to go out hard one last time. But the thing is, your body's fatigued. You've done a lot of work to this point. So sometimes resting, you're not able to pick it up as quickly as you, what you practiced in the off season. Three minutes and 32 seconds for OBA to accomplish the worm clean and jerks. The fastest time on the squats belonged to Nordic at 58 seconds. Everybody else was over a minute. OBA took a minute seven. Fastest time on the bike was Milford at 2.20. And it is Milford that joins OBA now, back up front here. Final movement with the worm, it's the worm thruster. You mentioned the last movement on the complex with the squats, cleaner jerks, and now thrusters. Teams, once they do get to the thrusters, Emma Ferreira, they're just having a bit of a stumble, but they must lock these positions in, going to the conga line muscle up. So this is the point where you can change positions, and Milford have done just that with Emma Ferreira, the anchor leg of this four-person team. Milford switched that up just before the final set on the clean and jerks. They'll take a break here. Even at 10, that little slip up by Ferreira opened the door for open box. And open box will now take advantage again. So the worm is up off the ground for OBA. Center of screen. This is overtake team density. Marco Coppola in the front there, captain. Look at the contrast here. I just want to show the form for OBA on the left of your screen. They were keeping the worm so nice and tight, keeping everything in level. Not a lot of sag in between the segments. Milford on the right just had a little bit more sway. Makes it a little bit harder, feels a little bit heavier having that gap. Fobier sets the time to beat here and passes just one team from the next heat. They'll finish up their games with three top 10 finishes in the final four events. Great ending for OBA. Especially given they haven't worked together as a team all that long compared to some of the others in the field. Three 31-year-olds and then just a youngster, Ashley Wozni, 24 years old. Walked into the gym during the open and started pushing the tempo for the older ones. Joey said, we got to keep going. She's making us look bad. She's making you look great here at the CrossFit Games. OBA is the first to the conga line bar muscle ups. Each athlete must complete 20. Joey Tortora is in a great spot. Kelsey Keel is in a great spot because they get to do 10 by themselves. Everybody else has to do all 20 synchronized with someone in front or behind them. All part of the team strategy and who's going to communicate, who's going to move better together. And you can probably match it up with the size of the athlete as well. So the transition up and over the bar is a lot quicker. Joey doing it pretty easy on his own right now. A great turnover and it's barely a transition to the top. The higher that pull, the easier the tricep extension at the top. Tony Ficini getting things kicked off for Milford. Four minutes left to go before the time cap here. These teams should be able to make it through, at least those ones that have made it to the bar muscle ups. And it'll be Wozni now that coordinates with Tortora. And Wozni's gonna have to go at the speed of Tortora if he wants to make any adjustments to the strategy, to the number of sets. This is communication, they're already talking about it. And taking their time. The last thing you wanna do is hop up and have to reset while trying to work in sync. Synchronized at the top. Thank you. This is nice. Nice big set. Waiting to get that okay from the judge before coming down. Back at North Park earlier today, we saw some overhead squats. Joey mentioned that position of where they've got to synchronize. Bottom and top of that overhead squat, but only the top here. 
So a lot easier to, to synchronize these bar muscle ups in your pair. Synchronizing the bar muscle up at the bottom would be devilish. Third place right now, CrossFit overtake Marco Coppola. Captain of this team. Took responsibility when they didn't make it a couple of years ago because of a broken hand he suffered. He said, I felt bad. If I was on the team, I could have helped get us here. They are back here in 2022. What I like about this event here is if you're a really strong team like OBA, like Milford, and you can handle that worm, and you can smash it and get to the bar first, it's going to be how is your gymnastics, how is your synchronization with these bar muscles. And it's not just five or ten. It's enough for each athlete to have to do 20 and synchronize that together. But just to make sure this isn't just for the strong people. 25 bar muscle ups for OBA on the left side of your screen. That leads the way. Every athlete has to complete 20 individually. You mentioned Joel, easy up, front and back. The athletes coming through the last can get into their own groove, get into their own rhythm, not rely on their partners. So a lot tougher for positions, two and three. Final pairing here for OBA. Kelsey Keel working with Nicholas Hecht. Once Hecht is done, he's done. It's just Keel on her own to do 10 more muscle ups. And my heart is so happy. Nick Hecht, I met him for the first time back in 2008 in my garage where he and his family started CrossFit. So it is so cool to see all the hard work he has put in throughout all the years to get here with this team. Doing what he's worked so hard to do and now getting to shine. If they could take this heat, just had what a child. What a way, just had his, he has two. What a way to wrap up his first games. Kelsey Keel, 45 seconds for 10 bustle ups. With a little bit of fatigue under the belt as well. Give that one last breath to see, hey, how many can I rip out here without coming down? 30 seconds left to go for Kelsey Keel. Maybe a strategic break. Just give herself maybe five or six seconds reset and then try and close this out. Christine Middleton on the right for Milford. Milford two reps behind. 15 seconds. Keel breaks again. Will someone finish here in heat one? Event 11 at the CrossFit Games. Five seconds. Final two seconds. We do not have a finisher. It is cap plus two that sets the benchmark for our final heat of the games total. Oh God, I'm excited. That was so close yet so far, two reps. Oh. So many places to race in this one. But you've got to make sure you pace well enough, maybe a little bit quicker on the worm as they get through. Emma Ferreira, she was outstanding with communication on that worm. It was Milford who was first off the bike, but when OBA got to the worm, they just demolished everything on the worm. They didn't even look back, took a lot of time in between, made sure they kept everything together. Looked really smooth for a rookie team. They definitely look like veterans in this event. Great communication. Milford had a little trip up there, stumbled a little on the worm, but for Milford, it was once they got to the bar muscle ups, that's where they caught OBA. And they were able to slide in with one more rep. But OBA did everything they could well. Nice synchronization. It came down to the final athlete on this one. Milford sneaks ahead by one rep. Cap plus two, OBA in second, cap plus three. We have one heat of the final event left at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. It's next. A year of preparation, a week of competition. 
and it all comes down to the next 14 minutes. Heat two, team event 11, the finale here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. CrossFit Games athlete Jamie Hagia is our reporter on the floor alongside Jeremy Austin, Tanya Wagner, the 2009 CrossFit Games champion. My name is Joel Godet. Iceland Danny threw her hat into the ring on the team side this year. The intrigue was high, but after everything, it's still mayhem freedom at the top of the leaderboard. Rich Froning and company trying to pick up his 10th either team or individual championship all time. It would be the fourth straight team title for Mayhem Freedom. Reykjavik and Ethora's daughter, can they jump over that red line and into the podium? The final event. We see the worm come back into play. It's Echo Worm, and it's brought to us by Game Ready. The last test for these teams and these athletes on the floor, starting with 50 and 75 calories on the Echo Bike, 50 for the ladies and 75 for the men. Then onto the worm, 30 worm squats, followed by clean and jerks, followed by thrusters, then into 20 synchronized bar muscle ups for each team member, conga line fashion. 14 minute time cap, and as per the previous heats, they're gonna need every second of this. The recipe for success for this event is gonna be all about communication. We'll dive more into that in just a moment, but first let's check in with Jamie Hagia. The worm weighs 358 pounds with the bags going 100 pounds, 70 pounds, 100 pounds, 70 pounds with three six pound bag spacers in between. We're used to seeing more of this in competition, but we've only seen this one other time. So this final event will definitely test the athletes camaraderie and teamwork. Jamie, thank you. Tanya, let's talk about the worm. How does that factor into how you approach this? It is all about communication. You have to know what you're doing, know where you're going. If there's going to be any changes, you have to communicate that loud and well. Also, there has to be a good conga line plan when you get to the bar muscle ups, synchronizing them together, but also who you send first and last matters. Froning and Friends, Mayhem Freedom in lane five. They need to finish 13th or better in this event to clinch the championship. Oslo in lane six. They need to finish ninth or better in this event to secure a spot on the podium. Our teams to watch here in this final heat of the final event brought to us by Guaranteed Rate, Mayhem Freedom. Really not that much pressure on Freedom this year. It was all last year. Could anybody beat them? They were the super team of super teams. Largest margin of victory in games history. They secured that. This year, they had some pressure. They had some company. They dealt with it well. Oslo Navy Blue has worn the leader's jersey twice in this competition. Took that white leader's jersey off of Mayhem for the first time in four years. Can they be on the podium as a European team for the second time? Invictus has been on the podium twice before, including the 2014 Affiliate Cup, the CrossFit Games champion, last on the podium in 2019. And Reykjavik, Annie Thora's daughter, dabbling in team competition for the first time in her career, two-time an individual champion, 29 points out of a podium spot. They'll need to smash this one, but certainly capable. <laughs> Only problem, making up ground, been awfully hard to do. Really difficult. Because they've done so well, all the teams in the top four, they've just been jostling positions apart from Mayhem. So it's very difficult once the teams get cut to 20 and the points go to five per place. It's always difficult to make up points. We are underway. Final heat, final event here at the 2022 CrossFit Games. 75 cows on the Echo Bike for the men. You can change as much as you see fit. Anywhere you see fit, 50 cows for the ladies. Same rules apply. Change in and out as you need. It's been an exciting competition on the team side this year. Already with a quick switch here for Mayhem. You could see Andrea Nistler was on Taylor Williamson's shoulder immediately. Quick switches from Reykjavik as well. Absolutely, Khan Porter, we know how powerful and strong he is on any machine. Khan Porter, you legend tattoos now flying around the crowd. One of his fans printed those up. And are we gonna see a legendary performance from him? to bring the Reykjavik team home, the lone Aussie in the Icelandic team. Game ready, game day ready is an official sponsor of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Scan the QR code on screen or visit 
trikono.com. That's trikono.com. Game day ready. Time cap was a factor in the opening heat. None of the first 10 teams finished. I don't imagine that will be the case here in the second. Cap plus two is the time to beat. You need to go as fast as you can here, but minimize the damage on the Echo Bike. Mayhem, a lot of time on every time cap that's gone through so far. 44 minutes and 36 seconds they've had, in fact, right across every event, the 10 events so far spare. How far under this time cap? We'll have to wait and see. But if the worm comes into play at all, we know Mayhem are so strong, so efficient with that implement. Second change back, Rich Froning back on the bike. Andrea Nistler replacing Taylor Williamson. Look how at ease Tolomora Keno is. One of the strongest athletes in all of CrossFit. Mass moves mass on the bike. One cow left. Nistler is done. Fort Oyer is finishing the 75 cows on the men's bike. Well, that's another factor you've got to bring into play here. You want to be finishing at exactly the same time so you can move as a four to the worm and cut down the transition time. That's happening for other teams. Oslo has made it out to the worm. They are the first ones to start moving the implement center of screen. First European team to podium last year. It was Oslo and Janas who came in third. In the history of the games, we hadn't had a European podium team. We may wind up with two, now three, in two years. And that's it for Oslo and for Invictus, for Reykjavik. They are fighting for the podium, so they know they need to get ahead. They need a first place to give themselves as many points as possible. So a way to take advantage there while Freedom was still on the bikes. Haven't had a chance to talk about Omnia a lot, the team out of Colorado. They're on the left side of your screen. Mary Kay Dreiselker, who's in the Navy, second athlete in. Former individual qualifier at the games level. Looking to improve on a double digit finish last year. They are in the top 10 heading into the final event. Jamie Hagia spoke about transition of the worm with the weight difference. Once Navy Blue got off their Echo bikes and moved straight into position with that worm, they didn't mess around with the position of the worm. They went straight into a squat clean for their first repetition. That's obviously something they have communicated prior to coming in. How good is Oslo Navy Blue on the worm? Well, they came to the States before the games to get acclimated, time zone adjustments, etc. You need to find a gym to train at. They purchased a worm with an affiliate. What? They split the cost because they said, hey, we need the implement. If you help us buy it, we'll have one here to help train once we arrive in the US. They came to play this weekend, especially after last year's second place finish. Four minutes in, 14 minute time cap. That did become a factor in the first team. All of these teams doing a really nice job keeping it together, moving as one solid unit. Maybe blue. Two event wins in the first three events. What a way to start your 2022 games. Try and take it to the champs. These teams are now on to the 30 worm clean and jerks. It was 30 worm squats advancing every 10 repetitions. 30 worm clean and jerks, again, advancing every 10 repetitions. Once they cross that yellow line, it will be 30 worm thrusters. And then we're on to the rig for the bar muscle ups. Oslo Navy Blue leads the way, Invictus second, Mayhem Freedom third. This is what's on the line. Brought to us by Game Day Ready. Reykjavik 29 points out of a podium spot. Reykjavik's going to need to do very well, and they're going to need help to close that gap. Communication for Reykjavik, right of screen. Tola, third athlete along the worm, calling the shots for the clean and jerk, and it's a quick, fast dump. As soon as it hits that shoulder position, they're letting it fly down to the ground. Risk of doing that is the worm moving around in your lane too much. They just had a slight adjustment then. Well, they had big smiles on their faces, Reykjavik did, when they had the, this event announced earlier today, when it got to the bar muscle up spot. So I think if they can just hold it together here, we're gonna see a show when they get to the bars. Mayhem closing the gap. Within a rep now of Oslo Navy Blue, 
it was a slow start for Rich Froning. Jokingly said that as much after day two. They had a second, a second, a third, and a 13th place finish. Knocked him out of the leader's jersey spot. Since then, Froning and friends have not lost. It has been a CrossFit Games record, six consecutive event wins. Leader's jersey, firmly where it's been over the course of the last four years. And when you're talking about the best, you have to talk about Mayhem and Mayhem Freedom, led by Rich with that worm. They don't always have to move it the quickest initially, but their dominance and their just their ability to watch where they're at, know where they're at amongst the field is what they do well. Taking a brief break, understanding where Oslo is, Mayhem finishes that final rep and is now on to the 30 worm thrusters. Four-time individual champion Rich Froning moved into team competition in 2015, won a championship again in 16, was knocked down second place by the Wasatch Brutes in 2017. And since then, Rich has been undeniable. Champion in 18, in 19, in 21, staring down the barrel of a championship in 22, and he has done it all with nearly 20 different teammates. He has never brought the same team to the CrossFit Games. You hitch your wagon to Rich Froning, you're more than likely leaving this place with a gold medal wrapped around your neck. Well, you think about combinations, and teams, sporting teams spend years working on combinations to ensure victory. Rich just shares that around, and he's the common denominator to ensure they do get a win each time. He has led this community and this sport from the beginning as an individual. And when he went to the team side, he has just led anyone he has bring with him, all of his knowledge, all of his experience. You can't make that up. But people are moving there to train with him, to train with his community. Success follows Rich Froning, and it just continues on. Final 10 reps of the Worm Thrusters. Oslo Navy Blue equal with Mayhem. Now ahead of them by a rep, right side of your screen. There's Omnia pushing the pace as well here in this final heat. Closing in on nine minutes. 14 minutes is the time cap. Oslo Navy Blue is done. Functional fitness is a national sport funded by the government in Norway. It has carried over Invictus, trying to lock up a spot on the podium. They would do that with a third place finish. That's where they sit at the moment. But they're having some issues right now on that worm. Mistakes like that can be costly, especially when podium spots are up for grabs. That is the last thing they needed, and they did that again. Earlier on today, North Park with some overhead squat, no reps, which allowed Mayhem Freedom to sneak in over the line. Rich Froning leads the conga line here. He has 10 muscle-ups all by his lonesome. He'll then advance to the red bar and have 10 synchronized muscle-ups with Andrea Nissler in the white shirt behind him. And we said he is such a leader and he's leading from the front front. Follow me, everybody. If this is the final time we see Rich Froning, this is the final time we see Rich Froning on a CrossFit competition floor, soak it in. It has been 12 years of dominance, 12 appearances at the CrossFit Games. He has never not finished on the podium, and he has brought a whole community along the ride with him. Four minutes left to go. What do you think? The person with the least amount of rest it's going to be the person that gets onto the bar muscle up first. Rich Broning goes, team, I've got this covered. I'm going to bring you home. The synchronicity is easy. Rich Broning has finished the work. Might find out some answers to some questions very soon, though. Tia Toomey tried to play coy. Didn't she what? Three minutes, 20 seconds until the time cap. Eight of the 10 teams have advanced onto the Bar Muscle Ups conga line. Nistler in front, jumping back and forth here with Oslo Navy Blue. Nistler is done. Samuel Colorier now at the front of the conga line. Taylor Williamson stands behind him. 
No wrap then from Mayhem. Just getting their sequence out of whack. Got to make sure the transition is completed at the top of the movement. But there's still a few reps ahead. They just need to keep it together. Two more reps synchronized for Cornoyer and Williamson. Three reps ahead of Navy Blue, and it is all up to Taylor Williamson. Ten reps remaining. Quite possibly the deepest team field that Mayhem has ever competed in. For Rich Froning and company, it stormed straight into the storm. For the tenth time ever, Rich Froning will stand atop the podium. A perfect ten championships for Rich Froning. Williamson crosses. Mayhem Freedom. CrossFit Games champions in 2022. And he did it with that solid team behind him. It was an effort from all four of them. Taylor Williamson holding on for her final 10 reps. She barely got a breather. Oslo Navy Blue clinches second for the second consecutive year. And if that is the last we see of Rich Froning, it's a marvelous send off and quite possibly a passing of the torch to the team from Norway. Tell you what, someone is cutting some onions in this arena and I'm not liking it. Super dad, super husband, and super athlete, Rich Froning. Just absolutely outstanding. There is no better. Omnia has two reps remaining. And there goes Alyssa Shower. Omnia secures the top 10 finish in their return to the games. And now Reykjavik still out there in fourth place. Invictus is also still out there. No one finished from the first heat, so no times there for going to come into play here. Born Fisher comes across. Reykjavik finishes. Annie Thoris daughter's first foray into team competition. It'll be no worse than fourth. Was it enough, and did anybody else help them out? Invictus still out there in seventh. Mayhem Independence could finish fifth. That would be the best finish for a single affiliate for two teams since 2018, when Mayhem went first and fourth. Final two seconds tick away, and we are done at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. The question is, is Rich Froning? He talked about it openly in the lead up. He's been around this game a long time. He has another medal around his neck. All the records, just all the records that he set this week. That's seven consecutive first place event finishes, breaking his record from last year. They were wounded. They were in third place and then they never lost another event. Finished it out phenomenally. Mayhem Freedom carries the banner at the end of the day. And we'll go down onto the floor with Adrian Bosman. CrossFit Game fans, once again, your Affiliate Cup champions, CrossFit Mayhem, Freedom. The thing that stands out about Rich Froning, and not to take anything away from his other three teammates, because he's not here without them. This is really a coronation of Mayhem as an affiliate, Mayhem at Freedom as a team, but about Rich Froning. The time that this man has been around in this sport, he began in a different era when the sport was in its nascency and has dominated through different eras as the sport has evolved, as the athletes has evolved, as the competition has evolved. He remains great.
one of the first people I actually met when I came to the games for the first time with our team in the Affiliate Cup was Rich Froning back in 2011. And he is still here on the competition floor, dominating competition. He is the greatest of all time when it comes to our history, our sport since 2010. Let's go down to Jamie Hagia. Sam, UARA CrossFit Games champion. You moved from Canada to join this team. What have you learned from this experience that you're going to take with you moving forward? Oh, so much, uh, honestly. Um, that was an amazing season. I'm super grateful to be part of this team. And uh, yeah, CrossFit Games champion now as a team. And time to go make it as an individual now. Hi, Sam. Taylor, with back-to-back -back championships. Last year you started out in front. This year was a little bit different story. How does this feel different than last year's championship? Uh, I mean, everything's special, but honestly, it's just an honor to be out here with so many great competitors, great teammates. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Andrea, when you got the call two years ago to move down and join this team, you have won back-to-back. -back. What has this opportunity and Rich meant to you? Yeah, I mean, it's been an incredible experience. Um, got to see another part of the country, which is cool. And then I got to learn a lot and, um, I don't know, just kind of blend with the Mayhem family. Rich, over a decade of dominance. What is next for your competitive CrossFit career? We'll see, we'll see. I don't know, you know, I don't want to make any, no decisions yet, so I want to enjoy this with these guys. Uh, all of our Mayhem athletes that competed. I uh, just want to enjoy that. All of our support staff, my wife, my kids, all of Mayhem Nation over there. Uh, we just want to enjoy this and we'll make some decisions in a couple weeks. And it seemed like a great way to finish the weekend. Ten of championships. Yep. And you finished this last event on top with seven breaking your own record of consecutive events. Where does this rank among all of your accomplishments? I think all of them are special. Um, you know, every year is just a different year, and it was, the competition this year in the team division was raised so much, and we had, a, you know, just a, a good push and, and a, a stressful year leading up to this, so we want to enjoy it a little bit now. Congratulations. You guys are the 2022 Noble CrossFit Champion Games Champions. I'd like to be a fly on the wall over the next couple of weeks. Oh, decisions, decisions. Lucky Lou, I have an important announcement. An important announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we would love to have you join us for our award ceremony. This is Tia Claire Toomey's final event. She's back there, she can hear you. Put your hands together for Tia Claire Toomey. And make sure you stay for your award ceremony, which will be getting kicked off here in about a, at 3.20, 3.20. So stick around, show your love and support for all of these athletes who have competed all week long. We'll see you then, 3.20. Event results here on event number 11 on the team side. Mayhem Freedom wins its seventh consecutive event to end the games. Didn't win one until the fifth, and then it never lost. If you poke a bear, oh. I hope you have bear spray. <laughs> well, I did mention it very early on. Be careful what you do. Oslo Navy Blue, they exactly what they needed to do from last year to bring it to Mayhem, to challenge them, to test them. And the, all that experience and all that homework that they've done, it paid off for them. And I talked to Avon Del Ringard before competition today. It's a national sport in Norway. They train year round for the national championships, for the world championships. 
all of that time, it has taken a toll, he said, but it has also gotten them to this point where they compete at this level. And you have to think, these teams have raised themselves up to the bar set by Mayhem. All the years, they just, Mayhem didn't have the same kind of pressure. It was a great year for competitive team competition. And so we're going to see more of that with Oslo. We're going to see more of that Reykjavik. These are the teams that are going to continue now for what has been set up from Mayhem. Invictus came in seventh in that last event. It did not matter. They hold on to that final spot on the podium, the third podium in the history of the San Diego affiliate. A true affiliate team, really. Devin Kim started as a teenager. Jorge Fernandez walked in off the street. Same for Oslo Navy Blue. Just people that work out at that affiliate and train there. They joined Mayhem Freedom on the podium. And then Annie Thor's daughter just misses out on the podium in her first foray into the team competition. We'll see what the future holds there. That does it for our crew, though. For Jamie Hagia, for Jeremy Austin, for Tanya Wagner, my name is Joel Cadet. It's been our absolute pleasure to have you along with us here in Madison. We still have the awards ceremony and so much more to come. Stick with us for the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. CrossFit Affiliate is a place. It could be in a park, it could be in a, in a brick and mortar. What they would find is a community that they can instantly bond with, uh, great people, great coaches, people who really want to see them succeed through their hard work. CrossFit Affiliates are owned by thousands of small business owners who are part of their communities in every different corner of the world. It's literally the ownership are the people that are in the community. So they're people that might have started, lost 100 pounds, recognize that, hey, there are other people that need this and I want to be the providing source for that. So the CrossFit affiliate gives people a sense of belonging. It's that camaraderie. It might feel a little bit intimidating at first, but when you understand that everyone within those four walls wants you to do the best, it's very addictive and it's very beneficial and positive to you. You don't get to do what you love if you're in pain. Nice and slow, slow, smooth. Good, back to the middle. And right ear, right shoulder. We're here testing the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games workouts. Arosti's role is to make sure the athletes are able to perform to the best of their abilities so that we can do our part to ensure this year's test is the best that it can be.
Here at Arasti, what we do is we find things that are holding you back, things that are causing you pain, that limits your ability to not only work out really well, but to just live pain-free, do things you love to do. We find what's wrong with you, we get you out of pain, and then we show you ways to keep yourself healthy so you don't have to keep coming back to us. Beast, life was boring, and so were your sunglasses. What makes a good coach? Well, we, we have the definition of effective coaching, but at the heart of great coaching, the first thing is you have to care. And what we try to teach everyone coming into the level one is regardless of the ability level of who walks into your gym, that person deserves a cue. Whether that be someone who is coming to their first CrossFit class or a games athlete like Chandler Smith, our ability as coaches and our effectiveness is directly impacted by our ability to have someone leaving our class better and have learned something new than when they walked in the door. Hello and welcome to Day at the Games presented by Noble. The final day of competition has come to a close. I'm Kayla, I'm joined by Adrian Conway. And Adrian, what a way to finish the final day of competition. There couldn't be a better way. The literal write-up of this last workout that we saw took teamwork, it took focus, it took discipline, and it took a bit of tenacity with the worm cleaning jerks, the thrusters, and even the skill work at the end with the bar muscle ups. 
Let's take a look at the final team leaderboard. In third spot, we have CrossFit Invictus, sitting nice and snug in second, CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue, and up top once again is CrossFit Mayhem Freedom. And Adrian, Rich is really leaving quite a legacy. Listen, it's not new to me, it's not new to the rest of us as a community. Rich has been doing it for a really long time. And to say that he's the GOAT, to me, is a no-brainer. You know, we can call Matt Frazier the fittest man in history statistically. We can call Tia the fittest human in history statistically. But to me, Rich Froning is the GOAT because of his transition to teams and the well-roundedness that he showed us throughout the history of the sport. And of course, that's not to mention our other teams that were on the podium and CrossFit Reykjavik, who just missed out. Yeah. It was a stacked competition all week long. We were desiring that head-to-head -head matchup between Mayhem and Reykjavik, and we got a four-way head-to-head-to-head-to-head matchup with CrossFit Invictus in there, Oslo Navy Blue, and all of those teams staying in the fight throughout the entire week, all the way into the end. Now let's take a look at our men's final leaderboard. For the end of competition, Ricky Garrard comes in in third place, Roman Krenikov in second, and of course, Justin Medeiros up the top. Justin now joins a host of other athletes winning back-to-back -back championships. As we can see in the past, we have Tia Claire Toomey up the top with six titles, followed by Matt Fraser with five, Rich Foning with four, Annie Thorostotter, Katrin Davidstotter, and now Justin Medeiros all with two titles. Adrian, what's next for Justin Medeiros? I think that you can expect nothing but greatness from Justin. What he's shown us so far is that he's not gonna beat himself. He has the self-awareness of a veteran athlete that has been in the sport for years. And because he's continually building fitness, he's continually building capacity, that self-awareness that he brings to the table makes him tremendously hard to beat. He went three, five, three, eight, two, seven, three, five, five, three, four. Wow. And an 18th out there, kind of as an outlier. You guys are gonna have to get really fit and step up in order to have a chance and to stay close to Mr. Maderos over the years. And two athletes who did stay hot on his tail all weekend were Roman and Ricky. And it was a great matchup. We saw this almost throughout the week of entirety. Both of these guys came to play. They had a tremendous tenacity. They're both great competitors. And I think, you know, there are some events that they let slip through their fingers, right? We know that they have tremendous capacity. But again, to lean back into Justin's strengths is that he stayed in his lane, he ran his own race, and these guys had to stretch to keep up or to try to beat him. And that left them with a few points left on the table when you look at all the events when it's said and done over the course of 13 throughout the week. Adrian, one athlete who didn't quite make the podium this year has to take our air rusty recovery of the day. Yeah, that's Mr. Sam Quant. Now, he had a great final day of competition, and Sam had these echoes throughout the community where could he be overrated? Was the second place in 2020 a fluke? Today, he stepped to the plate and he put us all on notice and said, absolutely not. And I'm here to play. And not just here to play, but I'm here to contend and here to eventually hope to contend for that winning spot one day. But he had a great finish with a two, a five, and a five across the board. And taking a look at our women's overall leaderboard, Laura Horvath comes in third spot. Mallory O'Brien in second, and of course, our six-time champ, Tia Claire Toomey. Now, not only is she a fellow Australian represent, but she is making history. Tia is history, and she is pretty much the logo of this sport at this point. Tia with eight CrossFit Games appearances and now six individual championships. Kayla, I don't know if you know this, but she has now 35 individual event wins. When we talk about dominance, when we talk about greatness, in this sport forever, we can never leave out the name Tia Claire Toomey. And if it's true that we've seen her compete for the final time, I'm gonna have to hold it together so I don't <laughs> shed a tear, because she'll be missed. I agree. And so many new themes coming through this year, and Next Generation is one of those. We have a very young uh, field out there this year. We do. I mean, look at number two right there. Mal O'Brien, as an 18-year-old, is the youngest competitor to ever step foot onto the podium. And she's, in fact, the highest finishing American woman since 2013, which was Lindsay Valenzuela. So we've got this Next Gen, Emma Lawson, Emma Lawson included, at 17 years old, who still needs a chaperone to be let in and out of these doors every single day. And I think it's something that we cannot ignore. They're not just here to play, but they're here to contend and they're not waiting their turn. They're literally knocking down the door and uh, demanding that they get one of these podium spots really quick. 
a very exciting weekend and a very exciting day, that's for sure. Adrian, who gets our monster hydro hard charging moment? The hard charging moment has to go to Miss Laura Horvath. I mean, she pretty much came absolutely out of nowhere today with two event wins and a very strong finish in the final with a fourth place. When it comes to work capacity, she's almost unmatched. She's got a couple weaknesses that we currently know about, and they were expressed this weekend in regards to gymnastics pressing. But when it comes to hanging, she's got it. When it comes to endurance and stamina and strength, she's got it. If she can dial in a few things over the next couple months and into the next few years, she's going to be a consistent threat for the top of the podium. A force to be reckoned with, that's for sure. A big thank you to our sponsor, Noble, who this year put together a watch party all the way in London. What an exceptional day we have had so far here at the Noble CrossFit Games Fan Zone Experience here in London. We've had workouts going on throughout the day with many boxes in and around London and we've had participants from all around the country. It's been so amazing to be able to enjoy the sunshine and to watch the team get involved amongst the community because that's what it's all about. Adrian, I think after the CrossFit Games, that almost looks like the place to be. It literally, I mean, it's definitely second, right? It's a very close <laughs> second. And it's amazing that they would put on such a spectacle for people to gather, participate in a fitness event, and be able to watch the showcase of the pursuit of the fittest on earth here in Madison. A big congratulations to all of our athletes that competed this year. Don't go anywhere. The awards ceremony is coming up next, where we'll be announcing some special categories. Spirit of the Games, Most Improved and Rookie of the Year. All of these are amazing literal categories that we come up with because we know that we're much more than just a gold, silver, bronze. We're a community and we celebrate a lot more that goes on behind the scenes and in front of these guys on the competition floor. And that is what we're going to get to turn our attention to here in the next few minutes. Don't go anywhere. The awards ceremony is up next. That'll do it for us here at Day at the Games. For Adrian Conway, I'm Kayla Banfield. And a big thank you to the rest of our Day at the Games team, Tommy Marquez, Annie Sakamoto, and Dan Bailey. Of course, a thank you to the entire broadcast team from everyone behind the scenes and beyond. Thank you to our judges, our volunteers, and of course, our community. You are the heartbeat of our sport. See you next year.
While we're getting set up for our award ceremony, we want to take a moment to recognize the people who offer their support from behind the scenes, quietly dedicating themselves to the success of our CrossFit Games athletes. The friends and family members who make time in their busy lives, temporarily leaving behind loved ones and their day jobs to support these athletes. There are so many incredible individuals with us right here in Madison that fit that very description. We would like to call out one of these individuals. Can I have Luciana Delagnol make her way onto the competition floor? Luciana, if you look to your left and your right, if you see Lucia, Luciana Delagnol, please make your way onto the competition floor. I just wanted to thank you all for being here. Um, it was a pleasure to compete here again. Um, you guys are amazing. And I also want to thank the support of my girlfriend. And she's awesome, she did great. She encouraged me every time that I needed this weekend. I didn't have the weekend that I expected. But she was with me all the time and she was like encouraging me, lifting me up and everything. So. Quer casar comigo? Congratulations to Guy and Thank Luciana. You all. She said yes. <laughs> Congratulations, you guys. Noble CrossFit Games Award Ceremony. Athletes, you have done it! <laughs> 2022 has been one for the record books and will be remembered for years to come. Your performances were inspiring. Your camaraderie was inspiring. Your love for the sport of CrossFit has inspired this global community. The sacrifices you've made and the dedication you've put into your training has been witnessed and showcased in the front of the world. Thank you. Thank you for elevating the sport, for pushing the threshold of what we all thought was possible. Thank you for making the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games unforgettable. If you could please direct your attention to the video board for a special message.
All right, we're gonna go right into our event winners. We will get back to that video. This year, athletes had to work incredibly hard to earn their spot at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Through the Open, quarterfinals, and semifinals, it's an incredible accomplishment to make it to this stage of the CrossFit Games season and a testament to the work they put in, day in and day out. Winning an individual event at the CrossFit Games doesn't necessarily guarantee a final spot on the podium. However, it is an incredible accomplishment and one to be celebrated. We'd like to begin our awards this evening by recognizing the individual event winners for each of the 13 events this year. Bike to work. Please welcome Haley Adams. This is her first career event win. There we go. And keep that applause going for Ricky Garrard. Shuttled to overhead. Welcome back up, Haley Adams. This is her second career event win. And keep that applause going for Uldis Upenix. This is his first career event win. Shuttle to overhead. Welcome Tia Claire Toomey. That's her first event win for 2022. And Jeffrey Adler. From there, we went to the Skill Speed Medley. That goes to Danielle Brandon. And Nick Matthew. Next up, it was Elizabeth Elevated. Please welcome Ariel Lowen. This is her first career event win at the Games. And Patrick Vellner. The Capitol. Put your hands together for Gabriela Migala. This is her first career event win. And let's welcome Ricky Garage. Naturally, that is his second career event win. Now on to up and over. Please put your hands together for Tia Claire Toomey. That is her 35th career event win. 35th event win. Saxon Panchik. And now the Echo Press. Please welcome this rookie, Alexis Raptis. And Will Morad. Alexis completed this in 641. Morad completed it in 630. That was the Echo Press. Then we moved over to the pool for rinse and repeat. Please give a warm welcome to this rookie, Lucy Campbell. This was her first career event win, and it was also the same for our male, Roman Kronika. This is his first career event win and his first in-person games experience. Hat trick. Put your hands together for Ellie Turner. <laughs> Ellie Turner got it done in 355. And please welcome Guy Mareros. Someone asked me, are they booing? I said, no, they're saying Guy. Congratulations, you guys. 
Sandbag Ladder. Welcome, Danny Spiegel. 250 pounds in her first career event win. And we have two fellas that tied, Nick Matthew and Guy Meadows. Then we got after the alpaca. They got after, I should say. Please welcome Laura Horvath and Roman Krennikov. <laughs> Horvath completed that event in 6.46. Krennikov, 6.32. After alpaca, we had two more events go. It went to back nine. Laura Horvath, come on. 46. Excuse me, 133. And then Jeffrey Adler. From there, we went to Jackie Pro. Please give a warm welcome to Lucy Campbell. And the Tsar Jukic. We're gonna keep it going with these awards. Rookie of the Year. 2022 has been the year for emerging rookie athletes. They went toe to toe with the most decorated athletes on earth and gave them one hell of a fight. Three events this year were won by games rookies. One of these rookies is new to this competition floor, but not new to CrossFit. They started CrossFit in 2014 and have been dedicating their life to the sport ever since. They narrowly missed the spot to compete in 2018 and in 2021. This individual almost missed the cut in 2022, but fought with everything they had and earned their place here. After two event wins, they proved they deserve to be among the fittest on earth. Please put your hands together for a 2022 Noble CrossFit Games Rookie of the Year, Nick Matthew. Showing a little bit more abs. Congratulations, Nick. For the first time in CrossFit Games history, we are recognizing two Rookies of the Year. This athlete is also new to the individual division, but not new to CrossFit. They made their mark in the teen division. This individual placed third among the fittest female athletes on earth in the first event and didn't stop there. They've earned several top five finishes. Without a doubt, they prove that age is just a number. And at 17 years old, they have a promising future ahead of them. Please put your hands together for 2022 Noble CrossFit Games Rookie of the Year, Emma Lawson! These two athletes are joining the ranks of previous CrossFit Games Rookie of the Year, including Matt Fraser in 2014, Dia Claire Toomey in 2015. We know their careers are just getting started, and we cannot wait to see what the future holds for them. Please help congratulate your 2022 Noble CrossFit Games Rookies of the Year, Nick Matthew and Emma Lawson.
Our most improved award recipient started CrossFit in 2016 and has been a fierce competitor ever since. They are a two-time regional semifinal winner. They are a five-time games individual qualifier. They are a two-time games individual athlete. They won rinse and, rinse and repeat in our first ever CrossFit Games indoor swimming event. They also won the Alpaca event. This year's most improved athlete award goes to Roman Krenikov. <laughs> Congratulations, Roman Krennikov! <laughs> that moves us over to Spirit of the Games. Nicole Carroll, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, everyone. This CrossFit revolution has grown exponentially over the last two decades not only because of CrossFit's efficacy in improving health, all the way to creating the fittest on earth, but because of our community, because of all of you. That's right, give yourselves a hand. In our gyms, we don't face mirrors, we face each other. We don't celebrate aesthetics and swagger, but rather showing up and humbly putting in the work. We share in the challenge of doing hard things because we know it makes us better humans in every way, on every level. In this shared striving, we create strong local communities, and these communities are the heart and soul of the CrossFit movement. They genuinely make the world a better place. Always remember that, and always fight for that. This year, the Spirit of the Games Award is given to an athlete who is emblematic of this community. An athlete who, for the last nine years, has trained, competed, and carried himself with uncommon warmth, kindness, and generosity. When he saw rookie athlete Rebecca Fusile fighting to finish her last climb up the steps of the Capitol on Friday, he was the athlete to stay behind and cheer her on. And as all of you surrounded her and lifted her up at the end of that event, this year's winner was right there with you. He has one of the biggest hearts in CrossFit, and the strength of spirit he exhibits on camera exactly matches what he shows off camera. This year's Spirit of the Games award winner is Noah Olson. Yeah, I'm always excited to be out here. It's uh, my ninth time doing it, and still a lot of nerves, a lot of pressure, a lot of excitement. We appreciate the experience on their behalf and for them, and for all my people that are cheering me on, I want to give them some exciting moments to be able to celebrate with me. Congratulations, Noah.
This year's team competition began with 36 teams from around the world. At this time, we'd like to recognize the top three teams at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. In third, with 881 points, put your hands together for CrossFit Invictus! This team is made up of Devin Kim, Brittany Weiss, Joshua Alshayom, Jorge Fernandez. They are one of the most successful affiliates in CrossFit Games history. They have been competing in CrossFit Games, CrossFit Invictus since 2009, and they are from San Diego, California. CrossFit Invictus. In second, with 892 points, put your hands together for CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue! Ingrid, Lena, Nicolay, and Avind make up CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue. These team members have been together for six years. They took second place in 2021. They're from Oslo, Norway. They took first in Biker Bob and first in Fast. Crosslo, CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue. <laughs> and now, taking first with 952 points, CrossFit Mayhem Freedom! We've got Andrea Nissler, Taylor Williamson, Samuel Cornier, and Rich Froning. They sweep, swept every event after event number four. This is their eighth CrossFit Games appearance. They won in 2015, 2016, 2018, 2019, 2021, and 2022, give it up for your 2022 Affiliate Cup champions from Cookville, Tennessee, CrossFit Mayhem Freedom! One more round of applause for your top three. <laughs> Congratulations, you guys. Get that photo up. Congratulations! And now for our individual winners. And now for our 2022 Noble CrossFit Games individual winners. Our third place female athlete with 981 points is Laura Horvath! This is Laura's fifth consecutive individual CrossFit Games appearance. She was our 2021 second fittest woman on earth. She earned seven top five finishes this week. Her back-to-back -back event wins in the Alpaca and back nine helped secure her place on the podium. Let's give it up for our 2022 third fittest woman on earth, Laura Horvath. Our third place male athlete with 1,068 points is Ricky Gerard. Ricky won event number one, Bike to Work. He won the Capitol. He had six top five event finishes. Let's give it up for our 2022 third fittest minute on earth, Ricky Gerard.
in second place with 1,045 points, welcome Mallory O'Brien! This is Mal's second CrossFit Games individual division appearance. She placed seventh in 2021 at just 17 years old. She's earned seven top five finishes this week. Her third place finish in Jackie Pro secured her spot on the podium. One more big round of applause for our second fittest woman on earth, Mallory O'Brien. In second place, with 1,157 points, give it up for Roman Kritikov! <laughs> this is Roman's first in-person CrossFit Games appearance. He got second place in the Capitol. He had five top event finishes this week. Let's hear it for our 2022 second fittest man on out all week for the top spot. Let's give it up. Oh, goodness gracious. Baby on board. <laughs> Let's give it up. We're gonna start with our female athlete, please. With 1,158 points, let's hear it for Tia Claire Toomey. This is Tia's eighth consecutive individual CrossFit Games appearance. Her sixth straight fittest on earth title. This is her eighth consecutive podium. She earned eight top five event finishes this week. She won the shuttle the overhead B, up and over, giving her 35 total career event wins. Let's hear it for your 2022 Noble CrossFit Games champion, Tia Claire Toomey. with 1,184 points. Put your hands together for our two-time Noble CrossFit Games champion, Justin Medeiros! <laughs> Justin earned nine top five finishes. At 23 years old, he is just getting started. He had five white jerseys on this week. Let's give a big round of applause to our 2022 Noble CrossFit Games champion, Justin Medeiros. We gotta let them get their goodies. And now for our presentation of the checks. With us today are No Bulls founders, Marcus Wilson and Michael Schaefer and Todd Molena. Noble's chief marketing officer. Noble is a training brand for people who work hard and don't believe in excuses. This brand was born in CrossFit, is proud to present the largest and the most expansive prize purse in CrossFit Games history totaling over $2.8 million. Of that prize purse, each of our champions receives $310,000. Let's give a big round of applause for Noble. Marcus Wilson. Michael Schaefer and Todd Mullaney. Let's give a big round of applause for Noble. We're also excited to give each athlete on the podium a special gift from CrossFit Education. 
an entry into CrossFit certificate course of certificate course of their choice. CrossFit EDU certificate courses are open to individuals and trainers at all stages of development. This world-class education and training includes entry-level courses such as the level one certificate course, intermediate level courses such as the level two certificate course, and age-specific courses such as the CrossFit Kids certificate course. Got that? Yes. A big round of applause for 310 big ones. scenes, our volunteers and staff. None of these accomplishments would be possible without the incredible workforce of volunteers and staff who put this event on. Can we get a big round of applause for our volunteers and staff who make this week possible? CrossFit community comes together to celebrate the fittest athletes on earth. Behind the scenes of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games, there are 650 volunteers who represent 20 different countries from all over the world. Ranging from ages 16 to 69, the volunteers are an essential part of the entire process and none of this would happen without their support. What's your name and where are you from? Uh, I'm Dan from London. Jacob Gustafson from Fergus Falls, Minnesota. Tasha Gomez, I'm from New York City. I'm uh, William Hennessy, I'm from Long Island, New York. Nicole Kozlarik, I'm from Chicago. Uh, my name's Edward and I'm from Cambridge in the UK. Raymond Acevedo, uh, Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, my name's Dean and I'm from just outside of Melbourne, Australia. It's Taylor Allen and I'm from Canada. What job are you doing here at the CrossFit Games? So I'm on a team called Special Assignments. Uh, I am a judge. Crew team. I'm doing scoring for teams and individuals. Security. Event services team. Medical team. Uh, work with athlete control and help get athletes where they need to be. How long have you been volunteering for? I've been volunteering now for five years. Nine years now. This is actually my first year here. It's my third year. Four years. It's my fourth year. Uh, this is my first games. What's your favorite thing about being a volunteer? Uh, meeting everyone from all over the world. The community, actually. Just all the people that I've met. Uh, I just enjoy getting over here and working with some good people. Being around like-minded people and uh, being around the community, it's just phenomenal. Just a camaraderie with everybody and meeting people from all over the world and country and just having a good time. Getting to celebrate CrossFit, getting to celebrate these athletes, getting to see all my friends judging, it's, it's phenomenal. I love volunteering. It's uh, to help people, to help the athletes. It's such a great opportunity, amazing, love it. Getting the behind the scenes access to the athletes. I mean, no other sport are you getting to see all your favorite people in one room together, the men, the women, masters athletes. I mean, everyone's so nice. It's, it's an amazing experience. A big thank you to all of our volunteers this year at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Between athletes, coaches, affiliates, fans, staff, and volunteers, we are all one team here at CrossFit. to all the volunteers at the 2022 CrossFit Games. Honestly, I know how hard this stuff is. We really appreciate all of your hard work. A big round of applause for our volunteers. And let's put our hands together one more time for the podium finishers in the elite team female and male division, the tested and proven fittest athletes on earth.
Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with six-time CrossFit Games champion, Tia Claire Toomey. Tia, you have so many eyes on you, and rightfully so. What do you say to those kids who are looking up to you right now, to those athletes, to the people that are fighting through their fitness and all the things that come at them? To believe in yourself. You know, it's, uh, it's you out there, and, you know, I think it's just shown this weekend, you know, that if you believe in yourself, anything's possible. Um, and, you know, it can be a, a long journey, a very hard journey. And so if you surround yourself with good people and you, you find really good people in CrossFit, um, surround yourself with them people and, and just really believe in yourself and, and work hard. And, and, you know, don't overcomplicate it. You know, we are seeing so many incredible rookies coming through, particularly this year. There's so many. Um, and th they're learning from such incredible veterans as well. And it's just so awesome to see our sport grow. And, you know, I think... Oh, uh, and I think that, you know, we're, we're really making a, a stamp in the mainstream sports, you know. Um, we're only a small... We're only really quite a small community in sport, and, and we're only just beginning, and that's what's so exciting. And so for anyone that's, you know, starting out and, you know, wanting to pursue this journey, I, I tell you, go for it. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a congratulations to all of our athletes on their journey, as she mentioned, thank you so much for being a part of our 2022 Noble CrossFit Games Awards Ceremony. We'll see you next year. Keep at it, we're gonna get you there. Great job. And we're gonna start with these ring rows. Over the years, nutrition has become more in the forefront of my preparation and getting ready for the CrossFit Games. Trifecta makes my life easier by taking the guesswork out. I think at the Games, there's a lot of things that are thrown at us. Having your nutrition dialed in gives you peace of mind. It's something that you don't have to think about. Trifecta is a great tool to help people chase their goals. My goal is to win the CrossFit Games. Surface Co. as the official flooring provider of the Wadapalooza was an absolute game changer this year. The most important thing was creating a safe playing surface and Surface Co.'s force mitigation and force absorption characteristics provided just that. Its interlocking ability made install a breeze but also kept all of our flooring in the exact same location from the start of the weekend to the end. It looked awesome. After experiencing Surface Co. this year, we'll never go back. Whether your goal is to chase records, write history, or become the best version of yourself, 
the intention put into the process is the same. To push your body to give its best every single day. For your body to give you what you want, you have to give it what it needs. The consistency you apply in every detail around your training is key. It allows you to perform one more rep in the last second. It's that rep that makes all the difference to make you better tomorrow. has brought tools into the equation for us, which allows for us to do exactly that, to give our athletes more, to give them something new to learn. It's easy to make it more fun because you just get to do that, just to be yourself and coach and have a blast. I do feel like CAP has made me a better coach and affiliate owner. It has allowed us to streamline uh, how we do lesson planning and gives us more tools in the toolbox to better our coaches and myself.